Florida A&M and Bethune-Cookman, a rivalry rich in remarkable effort across decades of heroic play. Today, the most prolific receiver in college history, Jaquay Nunley, leads the Rattlers, coiled for a fifth consecutive conference crown, while a 1,000-yard ground assault by O.J. Marchbanks marches into Orlando. For the Cats from Daytona Beach, senior Patel Troutman is healthy, a trigger man returning to play when it matters most. While freshman Alan Suber has been super as the Cats have clawed to 9-1. With the most dangerous DB in 1AA, Rasheen Mathis and Bethune awaiting A&M. So much at stake in the Sunshine State. The City Beautiful offering wonderful weather for an afternoon of tailgating, friendship, and fierce football today. The largest crowd each year in Orlando Citrus Bowl arrives for this showcase affair. Today, it's the 11th annual Florida Classic presented by Walt Disney World. As the Wildcats and Bethune-Cookman face their arch rivals in the Rattlers of Florida A&M. The Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference standings show you quickly the importance of this game. Bethune-Cookman, 9-1. Florida A&M at 8-2. Both are 6-1 and one in today meet for the conference crowd. Alongside Jamie Dukes, I'm Paul Kennedy. We await today's kickoff, so you got the conference crowd on the line, and you got the NCAA berth that goes with it, Jamie. No question. This is the first time this game is for all the marbles, and it's going to be a great game today. A lot of energy uh, in here today for Bethune Cook, but the most important story is who will run the Wyatt Bone offense? So Patrell Trotman has been on the shelf for the past two weeks. Well, the thing is, it's so funny. This team is so good. A team 9 and 1, and they got a quarterback controversy. Think about it. Patel Trapman, this young man, leading passer on the team, and also leading rusher here is on your left. And this guy has, is a great leader. But ironically, Alan Suber, this young man, has played tremendous the last couple of games. And check this out. The coach is sobering up. <laughs> Alan Suber uh, triggered in that Wyatt Bona, the uh, double slot option, the victory, the shutout win over Howard that puts him on the doorstep here of beating Florida A&M for the first time in six years. They have dropped five in a row. Today they will face for the final time a college football's greatest all-time wide receiver, Jaquay Nunnally, takes to the field for a final time this afternoon. This just in, everybody's All-American, Jaquay Nunnally, this young man, hey, He's got more receptions than Jerry Rice. Who would ever thought? Think about it this way. This is how good he is. He's got 10 less catches than the entire Bethune-Cookman team. This what guy's a great football player. And uh, ready to go today, the fabled number 85. The quarterback there was Quinn Gway, who was getting him of the ball. And the quarterback for Florida and him, the third member of our broadcast crew, is Mark Gray. And he's on the sideline. Mark. Gentlemen, it's my pleasure to be with you here on the sidelines at the Citrus Bowl. And I got to tell you something, this is my first Florida Classic and it's truly one of the great games in all of black college football. When you look at this schedule of these two teams, you see the one constant. All of them beat everybody except North Carolina A&T. And these two teams met two weeks apart in Greensboro. And on October 14th, it was all North Carolina A&T. Quinn Gray took a beating, put the ball on the ground a number of occasions, and then that opened the door for Maurice Hicks to just take over. He rushed against the depleted Rattler defense for 236 yards, and they were beaten down, but the Rattlers do get Pat Burroughs back in the middle, and they should be better off today. Meanwhile, Bethune-Cookman went down to Greensboro a couple of weeks after that, and then you saw Patel Troutman take a lick. He was left for dead on the field. On comes Alan Suber, and frankly, a star is born. This kid took over, ran the offense almost to perfection, gave his team a chance to win, despite not having too many reps in practice, and all of a sudden, Bethune-Cookman had a chance to win that football game. So you want to know what's going to happen on the inside? I asked North Carolina A&T's coach, Bill Hayes. I said, Coach Hayes, what's the difference between these two teams? He says, frankly, Mark, if you hit Florida A&M in the mouth hard enough, they'll back down. He said, if you hit Bethune-Cookman in the mouth, well, they're going to try to hit you back. It should be a whole lot of head knocking going on down here today. Let's go back up to you guys in the booth. All right, Mark, not only two outstanding football teams, but two remarkable marching bands on display today. As the Florida Classic 11 is brought to you in part by Amtrak. What a difference the train makes. Part of this magnificent program, be a booster, John today.
Florida Classic 21, presented by Walt Disney World Resort and Amtrak. The Wildcats and the Rattlers. And here comes the hiss of Florida A&M. On to the field. The marching band, a marching 100, actually uh, more than 300 members strong under the baton of Dr. Julian White. Continuing pre-game festivities here, which we hope the game can live up to, because <laughs> that was spectacular. Well, there's no question about it. That's the tradition of the Florida Classic. And Mark Gray, down on our sideline reporter, he is absolutely right. He's never been in a game just like this. And the Wildcats, they believe this is their best opportunity, and their head coach dressed in all white in front of them there. And Alvin Wyatt believes this is their best shot in close to a decade of knocking off a &M. And the thing is, you, you talk about a program that has grown, and that's what you're looking at when you talk about Bethune, Cookman. You'll see Coach Alvin Wyatt, Wyatt leading his troops out there. That is what this program has done. It has grown each year. That 5-0 and losing streak they have right now, they're looking to erase it. And yesterday at the banquet, you saw one of the wildest <laughs> spectacles in banquet history. He called them out. Did this alumnus of Bethune, Cookman, class of 1970, return to glory is his theme at the millennium and he's done just that after a swoon in the mid 90s alan wyatt this is fourth year has brought them back he faces billy joe to your left as you just left your picture there uh, the head coach at florida a m who coaches quite uniquely from the press box and uh, the majority of his offensive staff is upstairs as well billy joe an all-american in his playing days at villanova university and in his 60s here has done this. He has won consistently in each of the past four campaigns, taken Florida A&M to the NCAA tournament. And the thing is, hey, with all the coaching awards that Coach Joe has won, hey, stay right up there in the booth, babe, because you know what? He's done a tremendous job of leading this team. And the thing is, the reason he's up in the booth is because he feels he can see the field better to make the call. Now the commanding officer with the big picture. Out of the center of the field, the toss of our coin today, the captain. And to the, uh, the rag there, too. A pretty fancy on the part of Antonio Staley, the wide receiver. Here, our, our referee today is assigned by of the MIAC, Jerome Boger. With gold. But don't have to go. And he's he he going to hesitate pretty bad. Just okay, guys, come on, check out the great first half. I'll hand. take the football. <laughs> so, uh, Florida AM. And Bethune Cookman. Squaring off in the, in the bands last night here in the Battle of the Bands. What a show that was. We had more than 40,000 here. Prior to the game, down on the field, a special presentation made by uh, Dr. Frederick Humphreys, the president of Florida A&M, to uh, the most prolific receiver in the history of all of college football. On behalf of Florida A&M University, we wish to recognize the outstanding accomplishments of Jock Wade not only He's been a great athlete, a great student, and a great leader at our university. He really is the Heisman Trophy winner for the year 2000. Please give him a warm round of applause as we give him this memento. Congratulations, John. The senior from Miami, honored by his president for shattering the records of this man, Jerry Rice from Mississippi Valley State. And unfortunately, having played with the Atlanta Falcons, I saw way <laughs> too much of that young man right there, Jerry Rice. 16 receptions in their last game two weeks ago against Southern University, which elevates him to 306 and more than 4,000 yards. No question about it. The thing about this young man, he plays you see a slot receiver, which means he's a receiver that's lined up inside. And what he's got is what I call wicket. I mean, what that wicket means is a guy that, just like Peter Warwick at Florida State did, what he does is he makes you fall in your shoe. 
Well, he'll wait for his defense to get him the football for the first time in a series that the Rattlers have dominated, especially as of late. Last season, 63-14. to 14. What was Alvin Wyatt's charge to his troops at the uh, banquet yesterday, I, the mayor's I, banquet? I believe he said <laughs> the score will not be the same this year. <laughs> And his team stood and cheered. Lennon Nesbitt, see the sophomore set to uh, kick. Very dangerous Antonio Stanley, junior from Miami, who leads the MIAC in returns. And he'll field the football. We are underway. Great to have you along. It's this Thanksgiving holiday as Stanley bounces it outside and is run out of bounds. So here come the Cats from Daytona Beach, Florida. And who will be the quarterback? It should be that senior, Patel Troutman, a native of Daytona Beach in his final Florida Classic. Out the last two weeks, separated his left non-throwing shoulder. And the other thing about it that you saw right down the stat line is another 712 yards of rushing offense. This is what this young man does, both balance off of running the ball and passing the football. His head coach says... Patel Trotman takes us where we want to go. And he has a nine of ten weeks this year. Certainly that offense has. Ron Boger. I believe uh, an issue with the clock here. As he comes to the sideline. And there our crew to work this game. Johnny Forte, the umpire, will be right in the middle of the mix inside there. <laughs> Where all the action is. Blustery down here in the panhandle, and in the deep south, it's been downright cold, frigid, rainy, but we haven't had a drop so far. And the temperature just a short while ago in the mid-70s, although there are uh, clouds above. Well, that'll be very interesting when you consider the fact that FAMU throwing the ball so much, uh, it could really have a factor with them. You know, of course, Bethune-Cookman running the Wyatt Bone, as we would call it. And we'll talk a little bit more about that today. The Wyatt Bone, they're putting the ball on the ground. They're more astute at actually running the football. So uh, Bethune-Cookman today running that uh, Wyatt Bone will align like this. Let's take a look at our uh, backs and receivers as uh, presented by Amtrak. That's Teron Porter. Marcus Goggins, Jason McCoy, along with Stanley, who fielded the opening kickoff, and Eric Lash, very dangerous sophomore wide receiver from Panama City. Tackle to tackle, Jesus Ardui for 71, tips it at 260. Napoleon Joseph, Aaron Herndon, Gabe Pinella, Torrance Green. First down, first play, down he goes. Gerard Daly, the academic All-American right in, all over. Troutman on the first snap. When you talk about the wide one, the one thing you look at is you have a very short corner. You don't have a tight end in play there, so what happens is it allows the ends to get upfield very quickly. Quarterback now has to have a very quick week. Parsons, Ben Coleman, Cedric Bergeron Daly across the front. Academic All-American. Three linebackers, Anthony Cola, Patrick Burles, number 53, returns. Along with Andre Brooks, Troy Hart, Darnell Vickers on the corner, John Battle, Shedrick Copeland, junior free safety. The time will be kept, we are told, now on the field. Malfunction with the, uh, the clock. Two head coaches. Uh, they were complimentary toward each other, but both admitted that individually they have a friendship out of season and a fierce rivalry in the 12 games of autumn. The double slot option, the Wyatt ball, and the Wyatt ball has been snapped again by Daly. Daly devouring Troutman, and at the snap, Jamie, He's come roaring into the backfield twice. Well, that's the one thing. When you want to talk about playing the option, what you've got to do is get pressure up the field. And you're talking about a young man right now. You see a great camera shot right there, getting up the field quick, not allowing the play to develop. And again, the reason it's hard to run the option, especially without a tight, tight, without a tight end, is because it closes that space. You see right here with the wide ball, basically, as I talked about, no tight end, four, four running backs. That includes the quarterback, two wide receivers. Again, this team leading the country in offense. Walk up the blitz. Alex Fortson uh, was coming. 
added an additional linebacker. The first two snaps in this game, which will be charged with emotion throughout the day. A five-yard loss and a setback of four for Allen's offense. And that, when you talk about running the wishbone, you've got to keep it in normal situations. After the snap, false start on the offense, five-yard penalty. First penalty of the day. Yeah, when you talk about running it, when you talk about running the bone, the one thing you have to do is keep it in normal situations. First and, and ten, second and three. You know, you see right there, Alan Super coming in the game. He's the guy that's got the arm. A freshman too, from Tampa Catholic High School there. In blitz shown by Alex Fortson. They bring five, and Super shows us that arm. Double coverage at Antonio Stanley. And the pass far over his head. And it is three and out for the Wildcats. That's what everyone's excited about when you talk about the Bethune-Cookman, the Bethune-Cookmanites, shall we say, because this young man, Subra, a redshirt freshman, is a great football player and a, and, a, and a leader in the making. Talented arm, strong arm, very athletic. Now Zach Adrian will have to kick out of his own end zone. Florida A&M has blocked... Eight kicks this season. Eight kicks in ten games. Well, he tumbles this. Not particularly well hit. Toward Isaac Brown at the 45-yard line. And he'll be run down right there. Good special teams coverage on the part of Kenny Heatley. Hustling down on special teams. And it's a punt of 44 and a loss of three on the return. So our first look now at Quinn Gray, the junior from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, who has thrown 21 touchdown passes this year, Jamie. He's only been picked five times. The mighty Quinn. Those are gaudy numbers. Great quarterback rating. Very efficient quarterback. And he's a giant. 6'4", 230 pounds. The Gulf Coast offense. Flair for the name. You like the sound of that? Five receivers in this set. Empty backfield for Gray on first down. A lot of opportunities, and he goes to guess who on the first play of this game. And guess who attracts a lot of attention. That includes a linebacker out there and uh, Anthony Hubbard. So Nunnally with his 307 career reception. Here is the uh, Gulf Coast offense. Marcus Junius along with Isaac Brown, Logan, Hines. Offensive line there. I believe we had a roughing the quarterback penalty. And it's against Bethune Cookman. This will be a big step off. You know, I can't help but draw parallels between yesterday's luncheon where things got a little hot and heavy between the two teams and the start of this football game when you consider the fa fact that Bethune Cookman is a little bit antsy right now. They want to win so bad. Against a team in the AM. It marched last year in the NCAA championship uh, tournament all the way to the semifinal game. Lost the Youngstown State. This is Gray. Body covered. He rolls, rolls, and the pass incomplete at the 22 yard line. Uh, DeMar Bow could not get his feet down. This was the scene yesterday. Listen to this. I told you I was going to take care of you yesterday. I saw you getting a little nervous. We you were sitting between them. White. I told you. I had you, big boy. You had my back. Absolutely. I'll take that, uh, Jamie Dukes. On the ground. This is Nunnally in the backfield and close to the first down inside the 30. So they run the outstanding wide receiver on the ground for a gain of nine. Here is Bethune-Cookman defensively. They play a five-man front. Uh, Cook Lewis Mitchell across the front. Quentin Lewis, the nose guard, called the loss last year embarrassing. Four linebackers, Terrell Robinson, John Oglesby, Anthony Hubbard, and Jimmy Williams. Lawrence and Bush on the corners. Rasheen Mathis in those 11 interceptions. Joe Giddens in the secondary. Good football team. Tell you what, top to bottom, very well versed. Third down, needing a yard for Gray. Inside handoff again to Nunnally. I don't think he has it. You do have a conventional running back in O.J. Marchbanks. 230-pounder. Uh, 
typically operates out of the backfield. Why Nunnally behind his quarterback? Well, I think this is going to be the Nunnally show. I think it's a different look. He's a ch it's a change of pace when you talk about a, a great athlete. The thing about it, when he operates in the slot, again, he's a guy that's got a lot of talent. Here they are going for it on fourth down. And a four receiver set. And again, Nunnally with Gray in the backfield. Gray throws the hitch and it's off the hand of Isaac Brown, who is open at the 25-yard line. It'll go over on downs for the boom. And the other thing about when you, when you look at not only getting in there and not accustomed to being in there, the blitz came right up the middle, and not only was the guy who was supposed to pick up the linebacker blitzing through. Watch right here. You got not only lined up right here, and he's supposed to pick up the, the blitzing oh. linebacker right there. That's the reason the ball goes a little bit wide, and Gray's not allowed to stand through and deliver. Quinn Gray. Most passing yards, any quarterback, Mayak. I guess that would tend to be the case when Nunley is on the, on the receiving end. And just a specimen, too, when you look at it again. Six foot four, 230 pounds. Single setback for Patel Troutman, uh, who returns, tries to run the option, and there is nowhere for him to go. Anthony Cola, senior linebacker, number 47, knocks him down. And I tell you what, I would not want to be one of the guys from Bethune-Cookman going to the sidelines. I've got an old former teammate. You'll see right The way you beat this defense offense is you get penetration in the backfield. That is going to be the key. And an old, old teammate of mine, Brad Bernard, he's with me with the Falcons for a year. He's a guy that's really going to have his boys get net. Uh, Florida A&M players shaken up will step aside as well at the Florida Classic 21, presented by Walt Disney World and Amtrak. In Citrus Bowl Stadium today, that's Darnell Vickers, the defensive back, being attended to. Senior from Miami, shaken up. Mark Gray, Jamie Dukes, Paul Kennedy. Bethune Cookman and Florida A&M here in the first quarter, the 21st renewal of this series. And for quarterback Troutman, his offense now in two series, Jamie, has been pushed back. It's already lost 14 yards on the ground. And the key is his penetration defensively. You see right there again, blowing up the plays. That's what you do when you run, when you play against the option. You try to blow up the option. And if the, the offensive line's got to do a good job of recognizing what Samuel's doing right now is they are blitzing. You're going to see right here coming back, coming back at you. Watch number 53 right here blitz right up the middle. Well, the center doesn't have an opportunity to get over there. And so what he does is jam the line up, getting penetration to get in the backfield. What you've got to do when you run the option is you've got to get the quarterback to the tight end slot clean so that he can make a read running the option. All right, they lose further yardage now, and it's third down. We'll call it 16. Pressure, sack. First sack of the game comes at the 14-yard line, and it's been all Florida A&M's defense. Alex Fortson here, along with Jerron Daly who have spent the majority of this first quarter in Bethune's backfield. And you'll see right here on the replay again, they blitz from the outside, inside. They blitz from the stands. Everywhere you look, green jerseys coming in. And really what Bethune Cookman needs to do right now, again, a, a really hyped up, need to settle down a little bit because I tell you what, once that offensive line gets going and Br Coach Bernard gets his troops going and they're going over there right now, once he gets them all situated, we're going to have a great football game. Zach Adrian hunts for a second time. Tumbles this across midfield out of bounds. It's unconventional the way he's hunting this ball. All right, let's uh, check in once again with Mark on the sideline. Thanks a lot, guys. Florida A&M safety Donnell Vickers took a kick to the back of his right knee. He's in a whole lot of pain right now. He's trying to walk it off, and it remains to be seen whether or not he will be effective when he gets back into the contest. And he is a critical component to their run success, as well as playing a vital role in their defense, certainly when they go into cover one or the two-deep zone type of things. You're familiar with that, aren't you, Jamie? <laughs> a senior from Miami being attended to there. Gray out of the gun. Incomplete. Uh, DeMar Bowl this time. He missed Brown earlier, Jamie. Now his fourth leading receiver from Hollywood, and Bow was open in this, what is known as the Gulf Coast offense. Their head coach, Billy Joe, nicknamed it that. And basically what it is, it's just a running shoot offense when you think about it. Four receivers, you see that little tight end thing? Forget it! 
No tight ends on this team, boys. And they lead the MEAC. Not in rushing, but they do a pretty good job here. They get close to seven there. But in yards per game through the air, they're close to uh, 280 a game, 278. They're and only sixth on in their ground attack. Excuse me. And the other thing it does is they put pressure on you by running the no huddle, so therefore you can't get defensive calls in from the Bethune-Cookman sideline. Bethune's defense looks to get set here. Gray on third down. The inside get Marchbanks. And uh, he is stacked up after he picked up a couple of yards. And what you have, what you're seeing there is the number five defense in the country. Bethune Cookman, that's the one, that's the one caveat where I think this team has not been given credit that it's due because they're nine and one. They got a great offense and a consistent offensive attack. But I tell you right now, that defense right there will hit you and they will hatch you up. Hey, great defenses are, are not accidental, are they? They aren't accident the way they're built. It's exactly Salty right. bunch there. TJ Smith. Averages 41 yards per punt, and this is junior year. Puts his right foot into it. Low line drive kick, bounces inside the five, and just a scoot into the end zone before the uh, Florida a Rattlers can get there. It's a 47-yard punt. It'll be down at the 20-yard line. Florida A&M and Bethune Cookman from Orlando today. Bright futures begin at Bethune-Cookman College. Junior Rattlers cheering today. Fans of all ages turning out. Florida Classic 21. This thing runs deep. <laughs> it runs deep. Started arriving early today, too. No score. First quarter, Troutman. Guns up the boundary. Incomplete. Looking for Eric Lash. Second leading receiver on the year. There was more there defensively. Defensively, Florida A&M has been solid throughout the year. And uh, that would include Troy Hart here. In the first series of this game, Jerron Daly, dominant. And again, penetration is key. Notice how many, how many green jerseys you see in the backfield. Again, guys right here, penetration all over the place. It's a swarm of Rattlers! <laughs> Four sacks. Two incomplete passes in the first nine plays of this game. Five for negative yardage. With Troutman slithering to the 26-yard line. Patel Troutman. You know, they balance uh, his ability to pass with his rushing yards nearly identical. He's thrown for just over 700 and rushed for better than 700 yards this year. And really split right down the middle. You want to talk about a great play right here. Watch the run right here. The quarterback getting working his way through the offensive line. Again, what Thune Cookman's got to do is balance their attack. They've got to be able to throw the ball and run the ball. And you see the numbers right there. 712 rushing yards this year. Third down now. Needing four. Trotman rolls toward the sideline and guns it complete. Right through the hands of Antonio Stanley, who was a very well defended there by Saquon Doe, who takes over for the injured Darnell Vickers. And the thing is, what you're seeing by both quarterbacks, Quinn and also Patel, is that the guys are a little bit excited. You see the injured play right there on the sideline. Guys are a little bit excited right now. And, and, and so when you have that, the ball tends to go high when quarterbacks send a little juice. You see right here on the replay, great coverage by the secondary. But again, the ball thrown a little bit high. Patrick Burroughs, too, their fine inside linebacker, is being helped off the field now. Been suffering from a uh, bothersome ankle that had kept him out of a couple of ball games, and uh, this does not look good. And you see the tape. You see the tape in that area right there. That ankle is taped up to no end. He's probably got about a pound of tape on that ankle, and he's the guy that is their trigger player. I mean, he's the man who really sets the tempo. He's the leader on this defense, and this is a big loss for the Florida a and Rattlers. Nikhil Bynum will take his place. Adrian pumps for a third time. Brown back pedal. The roll he gets on this inside the 20. And uh, the kicking game here in Adrian, twice kicking off his goal line, and now with some room to work, pushes uh, that offense back inside the 20. 
Nice right. punt there. And you saw Burroughs on the sidelines there. But think about this. Florida a had two great opportunities getting the ball close to the 50-yard line on their first two possessions. Now they're going to have to settle in and have a long drive and they're planning on scoring. But again, it goes back to all of the opportunities. You've got to take advantage of every opportunity that you have. Blowing basically two opportunities with the ball at midfield is not going to bowl well for the Rattlers. Billy Joe's offense now with the football following a 56-yard punt. Into the flat. Jaquay Meddling snares it for the second time today in front of a solid senior corner in Carlos Lawrence there. He's a fifth-year senior. And the thing about this young man is he's getting all the interceptions. Nobody else on the team really has many interceptions. This football player is a heck of a football now you're seeing Quinn sell in also offensively delivering the ball. He's what I call an S&D guy. Stand and deliver. He's done that throughout the year. One of the strongest arms, as Coach Billy Joe says, that he has been associated with. Doug Jr. from Dillard High School, South Florida Gray. Good time. Offensive line did its job there. Isaac Brown on the receiving end for a first down. Out to the 34-yard line and tackle to tackle. Gray had all the time he wanted. And it, that's exactly where it starts with, with the boys up front. The ironic thing when you talk about these two teams, they hate each other so much that they run everything different. Watch right here. You're going to see right here from the offensive line. Watch this pocket you're going to see right here. Form up right here. The offensive line does a good job. 3-4, basically dropping off in the zone coverage here. But look at that pocket right there. And once again, does his S&D. Stand in the lip. This is a sixth completion for Quinn Gray. Goes incomplete here, and it will set up second down. And notice again, the no-huddle offense. Can't get the calls in defensively. Coach Wyatt yelling in there. Tipped. Broken up. Incomplete. James Bush was covering. Big lineman got his hand up to deflect that pass. And now it's third down. We thought we'd see a lot of offense here early, Jamie. This is a defensive struggle early. You see right there, yep. Definitely a defensive struggle. And the thing is, again, both teams are total opposite. One team runs a 3-4, one team runs a 4-3, one team runs a run and shoot, one team runs a wishbone. We don't like you! <laughs> Third and ten. Grace slings, Bentley has the first down. Gray fired that pass almost sidearm, and in front of Carlos Lawrence, he's able to make the catch for the first. Watch right here. You're going to see right here at the bottom of the screen, right here in the slot at the top of the screen. And basically what he does is just run a little check down, sit down, rock. Sits down right there in the seam, right there in the gap, and that's the one thing. Hey, bro, Dick, they've got a touchdown. Marco Jones. Touchdown, Florida a and Going without the huddle. Big play. That's what this offense is all about. The crowd erupts. 55 yards. Quinn Gray to Marco Junius. And that's why I call him the mighty Quinn. Just a flick of the wrist. His arm is really high. I mean, the ball just jumps out of his, out of his arm. Junius with his sixth of the season. Juan Vasquez, the freshman ticket. And the extra point out of the hold of Isaac Brown. And it's good inside the left upright. Late in the first quarter, the Rattlers trying to win for the sixth straight time over Bethune. Go big. 55 yards to Marco Jr. He'd be a uh... Highly unique. Steak and Shake, famous for steak burgers. A marching 100, already up and rocking. Their offense is struck. Marco Junius from Quint Gray. And Junius beats Carlos Lawrence basically on a goal pattern, a fly pattern where the receiver just, just speed on speed. Lennon Nesbitt. Fix this. Antonio Stanley. Pedaling, looking for the wall. Run out of bounds. The 27 yard line. Troy Hart on special teams. The junior from 10. 
And what Bethune Cookman needs to do right now is settle in, and I would not be surprised if Suber came into the game, but I think they're going to come right back with the senior, Patel. But the thing is, what they need to do is settle in. I think we had a personal foul on FAMU on the sidelines. A little extracurricular activity. During the we have personal foul, face mask, on the kicky team. Uh, There's a First personal down. foul, so that's 15 yards. A major step off. Check in with Mark. Uh, how is Burroughs down there, Mark? It didn't look good when they helped him off with that angle. Well, as you can see right now, fellows, Patrick Burroughs, the senior linebacker for the Florida A&M Rattlers, is getting some attention to his right knee. It's been a knee that's been giving him problems all season long, and it's the same knee that cost him a good portion of last season. He's a critical component to their run stopping, especially up the middle, but right now things don't look good. They've been flexing it, moving it around, trying to see what's going on, but as it stands right now, things don't look good for the Florida a and linebacker. Back upstairs to you guys. And Cedric Bird this time stepping up, number 55, for another play on another loss for Bethune Cookman. And again, watch Cedric Bird again. The key to beating the option is getting penetration in the backfield. You see right there, they wanted to run a play action fake, did a good job of faking the fullback up, but the offensive lineman did not squeeze down on the backside. And there you see him, six foot four, 250 pounds of fight. <laughs> Second down, 14, following the loss. Six-man rush, and bringing them all, and it's incomplete. Intended for Eric Lash, and he took a hit as well from Shedrick Copeland. But the FAMU is loading the box. No question about it. What they're doing is basically trying to get pressure on Trotton. You see right there, he's a young man. You watch right here on the replay. You're going to see right here, pressure coming from the outside. And again, this offensive line is not a two and a depth at actually blocking for pass protection purposes. And you saw a lot of guys back there. And again, the ball sailing high. Sailing high. You've got to settle down in there. They brought seven that time. Here comes the blitz. Look at that arm. Incomplete at the 30-yard line. Antonio Stanley was running stride for stride down the sideline. Unable to connect. Defending Carlos Moore. And again, Bethune-Cookman's success, again, re uh, resides in the fact that they can keep it in normal situations. You'll see again, this young man has a great arm. You'll see right there, and there's a, li a little bit of holding right there. Hey, no harm, no foul, no flat. We've seen soccer-style specialists in place. Zach Adrian is almost a soccer-style putter, and this one shanks off his foot. I... He whips at the ball as if, as you would a placement on a soccer, in soccer form. And what he's trying to do really is keep the ball away from Isaac Brown, who's a, a special specialist, as you would say, a great return man. And what they, they don't want him to do is get his hands on the ball because FAMU has a very good special team. That's a 13-yard mistake for of Adrian. That's all they netted out of that punt. You are correct, sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Gray has already thrown his 22nd touchdown pass of the year. They hit it up to O.J. Marchbank, the junior from Santa Rosa, California. And like so many Rattlers on this club, look at all those decals on his helmet. He is a junior college transfer from Santa Fe, J.C. And as they say in my neighborhood, that ain't happening. If you think you're going to run laterally on the bethune Cookman defense, you're dead wrong. This team has such great team speed. And again, the number five defense in America. And they lead the MEAC scoring defense. They don't put points that often on the board against them. Dropped this time by Isaac Brown coming across the middle in traffic. And the mighty Quinn has done a good job of settling in there. You see the ball. He's just firing the ball in there. You see right Watch his arm. I mean, good delivery. He's surveying the field. You see him right there looking at his number one option. Comes into the second option. And watch that ball. Hey, that's on the receiver. Gray has some pop, too. The way he got that ball over the middle. Very lively arm. Third down needs nine. Time steps up, throws, and that's cut by Junior. 31 yard line. And as Gray released it, too, he took a shot in the backfield from Willie Burt, hung in there, and delivered it to Junius. 
And you're going to see right here at the plate, right here, again, reading the field, surveying the field, does a good job. Option one gone, option two gone. Let me go back to my third option, and again, you'll see right there in the backfield, Bethune Cookman getting a good shot on him. He still delivers the ball. Now, Junius is wide open because, again, he just went to the house. So, therefore, you got to play off of him just a little bit because you don't want him to get behind. There's a timeout taken here on Gray following uh, the completion of uh, 19 yards. Tune in to Sunshine Network to get your first look at your home team highlights. Next, L Florida Sports News. Perry Milligan and Tom Block, weeknights at 10, offer the day in sports. The scores from around the state. For more information than your local sports, is time to deliver. Tune to Next Hill. Florida Sports News, weeknights at 10, only here on Sunshine. Our producer today, Ken Cavanaugh. Joining us with uh, Jamie Dukes, I'm Paul Kennedy, and on the sideline, Mark Gray. Guys, last year in this Florida Classic, it was all Florida A&M 63-14. The explosion came in the first quarter where the Rattlers scored 21 points and sort of took the emotion out of the Wildcat attack. I submit to you right now, this is an emotional turning point right here. Can the Wildcat defense step up, guys? Been in Tallahassee a little bit, submitting. Oh, that's, 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 that's very mean, legal. That's why I call him the scribe. You think? Absolutely. Marchbanks, well, he does have a point. Archbank sweeping ride. Josh Oglesby is over there. No gain on the play. But you're you're early in this game, and we're still in the first quarter. Uh, Bethune has been playing most of this game on their side of the field. And again, uh, you cannot run the ball outside. There's, look at the team speed. Look at the great jer the white jerseys coming in there, coming from outside. I think I see the peanut vendor coming from over there too. Too many jerseys in white moving lateral. backfield march back gets what he can to the 30-yard line they will throw to march banks will gray Although at times with four and five receivers in the pattern, he will dump off to O.J. And again, the thing I like about Gray is he really surveys the field. He reads his options, and, and what he does is he, he's just surveying the football field. Look, he's re looking to the right, nothing there. To the left, nothing there. Then he goes ahead and hits the check down out of the backfield. And again, but at the same time, love the team speed. I tell you what, Coach Pete Adrian has done a tremendous job with this defense. Running his eighth completion, juggled and dropped. And Jaquay Nunnally, who has caught but two passes so far in this game, so credit due to the Wildcat secondary. No question about it. I mean, he's the guy that you want to feature. He's the guy that you got to keep a hat on, keep hands on. And the thing about him is that, you know, he can catch the ball one hand and two hand. You'll see him do that all the time. Not all receivers can go out there and catch the ball with one hand, but coaches have so much confidence in his ability. Well, heck, after all, he's got 306 reception. I guess he could catch it with one hand. Field goal try now from the impressive freshman Juan Vasquez of 47 yards this would be his season best but very accurate this year he kicked a 44 yarder earlier and this may not get there and both it flutters harmlessly into the end zone that's only his fifth miss of the year for the freshman from Miami and Coral Reef High School and I got to tell you, I don't talk about kickers at all. You know, and the thing is, I've, I've got a rare disease as a Florida State alum called wide rightitis. And so, therefore, let it I, go. I do let not it go, Jamie. speak. Just let it go. Hachu! 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 They come in threes, you know. So, hopefully, that's out of the system there. But there's another big game going on in Tallahassee as well. So, uh, Vasquez misses from 47. A break for Bethune, trailing 7 and nothing. Here on Sunshine, before a close to capacity crowd. And at halftime, the pride will be on display. The third marching band, Troutman here, knocked down by Alex Fortson. Alex Fortson's fourth tackle of our opening quarter. And you, and you see Coach Wyatt doing a great job of, uh, of coming up with scheme. On that particular play, they run the reverse option. So what it does, we talked about the Florida a and Rattlers being in the backfield, flowing so well with the option, but they ran on that play was a reverse option, which all of a sudden gives them a pocket and it gives them a little time to get to the tackles on the backside. Still the leading ground attack in the MEAC and held a negative yard so far. 
Troutman will lose for the yardage. He is a marked man today. Alex Fortson, along with Duran Daly, Nakia Bynum, have him in the crosshairs. Again, run the shotgun. What they do is they run a play action and run a sprint right to buy him time. But the key is everything's fine. The offensive line does a good job on the backside. There is no one open down the field. You see, he's covered back here. There's no one open when you have two when you have two receivers again. Watch right here. The offensive line does a good job of sealing the corner right here. He's fine right there. But again, there is nothing to the backside. There's only two receivers in the route, and that's the reason why play doesn't work. It's third down now. Third and 13. Stanley fumbled the ball after the catch. At the 35-yard line, it's marked that he caught it for a gain of eight on the play. And the fumble out of bounds. And the guy who makes that play is Carlos Moore. Sitting man-to-man, -man, does a good job of not only making the tackle, but causing the fumble and stripping the receiver at the same time. Fourth down. Fourth down and needing six. And now Zach Adrian, his last punt was at 13 yards. He's also hit one with a bounce of 56. And this one he pounds deep. Backpedaling, Isaac Brown. He was on the other line. Coming to the sideline. And dropped at the 15. And that's... And that's, excuse me, that's one of those plays where the coach says, all right, we tried to be smart, we tried to be cute, that's all right, just kick the ball to the kid and let our special teams coverage take care of it. Booming 50-yard punt with a four-yard return. The ball will be spotted at the 15-yard line. Cedric Moore on the stop. Florida a ms Magnificent marching band. Listen, they started the NBA for like a magic season. And the hour there, Brown lunges, puts the football out, able to cross the 20 yard line. Again, SD stand and deliver. What he does, the mighty Quinn does, is he surveys the field. Very confident, very poised back there. Offensive line doing a great job. We've come to the end of our first quarter today at the Florida Classic 21, presented by Walt Disney World and Amtrak. And it's the Rattlers who have struck first the fangs of Quinn Gray to Marco Junius for 54 yards this game's first score. The programs, the opportunities, and environment to help you get there. Begin the second quarter, facing second down. Brick. Fly in. Penalty marker down as he comes to the sideline and scoots out of bounds up here at the 20-yard line. And where the uh, referee, Jerome Bogger, threw that flag, yes, more times than not, it is holding. Where Mark Gray has a very important guest. Thanks a lot, Paul. Joining me right now is the commissioner of the, of the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, Charles Harrison. Commissioner Harrison, what a tremendous opportunity to have the conference on center stage in a game like this. Well, there's no question. The involvement of the Sunshine Network, Disney, the whole pay-per-view notion for this game with 70,000 plus in the stand, you couldn't ask for a better environment to, to decide the conference championship and then decide who, at least one of the teams that will represent us in postseason. Yeah, so to this game as a fitting conclusion to the regular season. It's a great big party, but we have a championship level contest on the line. How will this game directly impact the future of the MEAC teams as it relates to the 1AA playoffs next week? Well, it's clear the winner of this game is going to go to the championship, to, to the 1AA playoffs that start next weekend. Uh, we remain optimistic about the uh, opportunity to get a couple more teams, at least one more in. We've had that in the last couple of years. And and it's, you know, a lot of other things have to fall in place for us this year. With the success that Florida A&M had last season, how do you think that impacts, you know, the opportunities or the prospects for getting a second or perhaps even a third team in? Well, you know, I've been on the basketball selection committee, which operates very similar to what the uh, the football committee does. Rarely do you consider last year. It's you, you have to make it or break yourself on the case in the case of this year. We we have great talent in this league. Teams have done well, uh, but right now. It's We've lost a couple of our options. Other things have to happen for us. 
On a scale from 1 to 10, how strong has this conference been this season, in your opinion? Well, I think we've seen it go every year. We, we uh, This has not been our best year, but we're in there. We've made a mark, and that mark will continue. The ball will continue to rise for us. Charles Harris is the commissioner of the NEAC, enjoying this contest like we are down here. Back up to you guys in the booth. Archbank fights forward to the 25-yard line. He may have the first down. And again, it goes back to the mighty Quinn. I said, stand and deliver. This young man has poise. Poise. That's what you look for. Pressure coming up. Shuffle the feet over a little bit. And makes the play. You know, watch right here. You're going to see the end come right here. Get pressure from the outside. And what you're going to see is a quarterback just basically missed the mighty Quinn himself to step off to the side. And the quick hitch again, Marco Junius. And he gets a little bit more. So they've come off the goal line. Marco Junius has been a star so far. With all the attention being paid to Jaquay Nunnally on the other side. Junius now with his third reception. One of which has gone for a touchdown. Post your own. Just one more way. Sunshine Network lets you be a part of the game. Get online at sunshinenetwork.com. So far against the third. Time to throw caught. What a nice catch. The 16 yard line. Damar Bottle. The sophomore from Hollywood. Shared that. A rope. Good gray. Look at his arm is as lively as you get. Think about it. What you can see right here. Good job of protection, as, as I would call that offensive line, the rump shake, because all of them got big old rumps. But the thing is, great catch, great concentration. Touchdown strike from Gray. And it's 13 nothing, Florida AM. And he beats all American in my mind. Rasheen Mathis on that play. A young man with 11 interceptions. Leading the nation in interceptions. A great football player, but he, again, the thing that he does, the reason that Jaquay is so good is he sits down and holds. He lines up in that slot, and he can really survey the field. Here comes T.J. Smith for the extra point against the third best pass defense in all of 1AA football, third in the nation. Quinn Gray has already thrown two first half touchdown passes. The extra point is missed and thrown for over 150 yards. Quinn Gray, a magnificent first half for him and for Florida A&M. Postseason down and playing today early like a champion. Network Live, tomorrow night at 6.30. The step showed, obviously, I was wrong, but you want to talk about it again. This game is about pageant. There's no question about it. And they play some pretty good football in the process. First down now. Trotman tries to turn the corner. They string it out, and there is nowhere to go. Exceptional defense. Troy Hart up from the corner to flip to Rand Porter. And what you're going to see here, this is a good job of the offensive line coming off the ball. Great fake inside, but the quarterback's got to draw, go directly to the defender. And he didn't draw the defender, and you'll see right there, the receiver also on the outside there missed his block. Everybody's got to do their part. That's the one thing about when you're talking about running the option. If you've got receivers that are outside that are supposed to be blocking, they've got to block the cornerback. Run support, too, from Carlos Moore on Trotman. He had the quarterback, and Bethune, honestly, is looking for answers. Over is Trotman, and you can see Alvin Wyatt upstairs. Living his second time out of the first half. Alvin Wyatt, we saw how hot he was, upset the way that his offense has been shoved back by the defense of the man to your right in Billy Joe, who has dominated this series. He's won all four meetings between the two. And the key is, is basically you've got nine guys in the box. That's the whole key. Blitz coming. And he unloads. Again, Alex Fortson was knifing through the linebacker. He said to him frequently, and here Alan Suber. Unable to connect. It may be a situation that Alvin Wyatt now needs to play his freshman passing quarterback in this game because the ground attack, the option, 
has just been stuck. And again, you're going to see guys blitzing here. They're sending everybody. The thing is, what the game plan is, Coach Joe's game plan is this. I'm going to play man-to-man -man coverage outside on the two receivers. The Doom Cookman is not necessarily a passing team, of course, so therefore they're putting the pressure on their corners, but that also gives them the ability to shut it down because they got nine bodies inside the box. It's coming again. Here they come. Trump. He'll lose yardage on this again. You're talking about the top ground attack in the MIAC. That, I mean, snap after snap is being buried by the likes of Ebby Parsons here, the academic All-American. Because he, but the thing is, if it wasn't Ebby, it was one of the other eight guys who were in the box. Again, what you're seeing, again, you see Bynum right there, downhill, coming at you in your living room. But again, there are so many bodies in green that you don't have the opportunity to make plays. Zach Adrian following what is officially the sixth sack recorded in the first half by Florida A&M. And Adrian, directional kicking, boots this uh, out of bounds at about the 35-yard line for Florida A&M. Let's check in with Mark. Well, as you can imagine, Coach Alvin Wyatt, one of the more spirited coaches on the oh. was quite, shall we say, exercised profanity lace tirade he's told his defensive unit he wants them to step up he wants them to step up and hit somebody he wants them to play a lot more aggressive and put a helmet on somebody so look for the wildcats to relax the zone defense and go with a lot more man-to-man -to, -man to try and play more aggressive guys now quinn now you blitz what you'll have here man coverage and you stack the box and Gray can scramble. She does here, he'll get eight, nine yards a pop. Now, I don't know about profanity. I think I heard a darn or two in there, but I don't think I heard any. A profanity. shucks. Yeah, there was one shucks absolutely. in there. And I think a, a Mickey Andrews that gummit, I think I heard also. <laughs> Second down going without a huddle. His older brother Angelo. Here is Nunnally. Dangerous two after he catches is the senior from Miami. And that's, and that's the thing yeah. about him. Yeah, that, exactly. Yeah, yards after the catch. That's what he does best. The thing about him, he's a very shifty receiver. Some people have questioned his speed, uh, saying that he's not a fast receiver. But the one thing I know, this young man gets open. First down now, 45-yard line. Swinging it out of the backfield to Nunnally. Nunnally to the 40. Good move there. Yards after catch. Yakety yak, yak. Don't look <laughs> back. That's exactly what you're getting with Nunnally. And now over 1,000 yards in his senior season. Jaquay Nunnally. 1,011 yards receiving. A thousand yard rusher in March Banks, a thousand yard receiver in Nunnally. Offensive bounds in this system. That's the thing about it again. And what you do when you're spreading teams out, it actually allows the quarterback to see he's able to read the defense because they declare themselves. What's well, coming? Right? Pressure on him, and he manages to fight his way out of there for a yard. Josh Oglesby, linebacker, got him around the ankles. But you're going to have to put pressure on him, or he'll pick you apart with Nunnally, Brown, Junius, as he's done today. And that's what you talk about. What you want to look for is a blitz. And what they did, they spread it outside, and they blitzed from the outside because Coach Wyatt said, I want pressure. And what you're going to see coming from the outside, the defensive back comes in and flushes them in the, from the inside out and makes the play. On second down. Right down the middle of the field and a drop at the 17-yard line. Incomplete, intended for T.J. Hines. And you see the All-American in my mind, Math is sitting there waiting on him again. What you've got to do, T.J. Hines caught, tried to catch the ball with his with his body. You've got to use your hands when you're a wide receiver. You've got to look that ball in and you've got to catch it with your hands because that plastic on your shoulder pads will make the ball ricochet off. Third down now. Here comes the blitz again. It loaded it up. Motion up front, Quentin Lewis, the nose guard, number 92. Here to uh, jump the snap count. Let's talk about the maturation of a four. Contact by the defense, five-yard penalty, third down. Quinn looking to steal himself a few extra yards. And you'll see right there, he just works the cadence. Watch him bob his head a little bit. There was a no-play call right there. 
But what he's doing is working the cadence. Now third and five. Trey floats. Nunley stumbled at the 15-yard line, and it's nearly intercepted. Now, Jaquay will protest that he was interfered with. The ball was in the air, and he was knocked down. But there's not a flag to be seen. And I think what you're going to have on the play is basically in, inadvertent contact. And you'll see you talk about getting a break right there. Shot was there wide open for the interception and knocks the ball out right there. There was number 12. Give it to me. It was number 12. <laughs> I had it. <laughs> so there will be uh, Juan Vasquez. He missed earlier from 47. And this a 43-yard try. Six this year outside 40 yards, and uh, you can see that the length is a challenge for him. Must be the wind or something. I mean, the, the humidity here or something, because this young man has a lively... Oh, I stopped. That's right, I don't talk about kicks. That's but he's right. got a lively leg, and so what, apparently what's going on is that there's something in the air or something, but he's not getting the, the oomph that he normally gets on the ball. Missed twice, as he explains to the staff. He's also uh, misfired on an extra point. Tough day for the freshman so far. But Florida A&M protecting a two-touchdown lead. They bring the senior back in, Troutman. And the thing is, the offensive line's got to do a, a good job of giving him opportunities. You see right there, one for four, seven yards. Still having problems, and you see some confusion. They're trying to get his players lined up. Going with a four-receiver set. The Wyatt Bone, a double slot option, perfected, you would say, by Georgia Southern. His whistle blows here. Remember when Irk Russell, Statesboro, Georgia, had the great run. Won national championships there and won double Time A. This is the offense that they use. This is their third. Thank Greg Ross, wide receivers coach, was the uh, quarterback on those Georgia Southern teams. And this is the guy who's really got you got to give a little credit to. Eric Hayes, one of my teammates at Florida State. Eric Hayes, an all-star defensive lineman, a mean, look at that, look at his face. You wouldn't want to run into him anywhere. I don't care if it was on the first view at First Missionary Baptist Church. That's a guy you don't want to mess with because he was a great football player. And the thing that he's done in talking to Coach Joe is that he said he's really got his players really playing hard. They play with great leverage. And you can see right here, doing a great job holding Phil Cookman to minus eight yards in total offense. Minus 15 on the ground. A rushing attack that averages 250 yards a game. And it's lost 15 yards. Troutman guns us over the middle. Biggest play of the first half. The completion to Porter on first down. The senior, Taran Porter, for 14 yards. And here's the new Wyatt formation right here. This is the new Wyatt Bone formation. Wyatt Bone right. What you're seeing right now is the re receiver running inside and running a nice little, little inseam right there. And what he does is he spreads the defense out so they can make some plays down the football field. Taran Porter, just his 10th reception of this his senior year. One miss, not two, however. Shedrick Copeland, the free safety, Jerron Daly up. Copeland playing up there in the box, the freshman from Miami and Killian High School. Again, going back to the, the three or four receivers set, trying to find a way to make something happen. Coach White doing a good job of changing things up. And I want you to see right at the end of the play, Mr. Daly coming in with a hit with, as shall I say, some bad intentions. A lot of uh, fierceness and bad blood on both sides of the field between these two. Second down. Lost a yard on the play. Drop it. Again feels the pressure. Dumps this too far for Javon Henry to reach it. The Crescent City, Florida freshman uh, ended up uh, on his knees. It's a third down. And again, a little too much excitement. You'll see Coach Wyatt coming in here on the sidelines here again, not happy with the execution of his offense. Right here again, they're going to blitz him. You see right here coming in late. You see the defense coming, the defender coming in to blitz from the outside. And again, just a little bit too much juice on the ball. 
Third down now and 11, and Bethune is looking to convert for the first time. 0 for 6 in third down situations. Caught Antonio Stanley to the 20-yard line. Stanley, touchdown! Not only do they convert, but Bethune is on the board. 61 yards. And the guy that makes it happen, I know you're going to go all the way down the field and look at all the pretty running that he did, but you got to bring it back into the backfield to check out what number 45 Javon Henry does to allow the quarterback to get the ball off. Watch right here, you're going to see trips right here, trips left to the bottom here, and what you're going to see is just great execution. He's going to come across and run just a post. You see the receiver jumps him on, defensive back jumps him on the inside, and there is no substitute for speed. And look at this effort. Tremendous effort to get in for the score. A third back in the football game. The extra point by Danny Mathis is good. 61 yards from Alan Suber to Antonio Stanley. That'll put a little charge in you. Great execution, a good throw and catch. Something Bethune Cookman really needed. Well, the Cavs with some claws here. Strike again on third down. And he's running free. Take over a the peek right here. You see John Henry right here pick up the block, and that's what allows the play to happen. Sometimes we get caught up in the, the guys running downfield, but it's the guys who do all the dirty work that really make it happen. For Stanley, his fifth touchdown reception of the year, but none has been longer for uh, Wildcat fans. That is the longest touchdown strike of the year, and it couldn't come at a better time. Sometimes opportunities are hard to find. Nice kid. Picking off. Real at the 25-yard line by Nunnally. Who spins. And stumbles up to the 20-yard line. He's never down. They have to sit on him and hold him down. Oh, absolutely. As you heard Coach Joe talk about grabbing the, the Wildcats by their, or Wildcats by their ears. He's a guy you definitely have to grab that rattler by the throngs because he's a young man who can really make it happen. And the thing about him is, as you say, you never know when he's down. You got to wait until the whistle blows. Now, Gray, strong first half numbers. Huh? 206 yards, two TDs. Post and no. That's what you call. Four receivers in this formation. Across the pitch. The march back. Out to the 34 yard line for OJ Marchbanks. Been an outstanding year for him, the junior college transfer. Knocked off the street by Rasheed Mathis. And he's a man, so he's one of those backs that just run hard. That's what he does best. Tripped up inside by Willie Pert is March Banks. The most yards gained in a season. Kwame Vidal for uh, Florida A&M. Back in 1995, the last time they had a thousand yard rushing. Five seasons since O.J. March Banks. And the Rattlers have been able to post numbers like this. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, when you're carrying 230, 240 pounds and you get up ahead of steam, there's going to be quite a collision. I just was, I was looking, I was looking at the, 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 the numbers on the kid, and I saw him yesterday at the banquet, and the one thing I thought about, he's a biscuit away from 240. There's no question about that. Great job of Gray checking the play, recognizing, and watch the block right here. Everybody's all American. There he is again, making a block downfield. Isaac Brown. Able to snare this in front of Carlos Lawrence, the senior corner. And now uh, here's Florida A&M and Gray beginning to march, beginning to move the ball, put together a drive, and take some of the uh, electricity and momentum away from the Wildcats after that 61-yard touchdown pass. 
Too high for Nunnally on second down. And you notice that you'll see number 16 on your screen right there. Let's, let's put the playmaker on the playmaker. Two All-Americans going at it right there. This young man, again, leading the nation in interception, just a, a fine football player. And the coaches, the one thing they talk about, very smart young man. And I, he looks like he's having some shoulder pad problems. You better strap it up, big boy, because they're coming again. Matched up. Press coverage on Nunnally in the slot. First ball, now picked up on the bounce by Gray. A play on over the middle. Jonius makes the catch. First down for the Yamaha. It's as if they threw Cookman. All they say is a fumble. And there, they have the football. He fumbled the ball. Did Marco Jonius. Recovered by James Bush. Big, and the catch. Big plays. That's what this defense has been about the entire season. Again, the key to the Bethune Cookman Wildcats success all season has not resided in that in the in the wide bone, even though it's been very consistent. It has resided clearly in the defense. Oh, look at the play. Was he down? The junior's fumble. And Lawrence had fell on the ball. Well, the first turnover of the game. And Bethune, which had struck for a 61-yard touchdown bomb. The Stanley has the football right back. And it's the man who's ruined Alan Suber. Down he goes. Dropped by Jerron Daly. The seventh sack of the first half. Wow. An unheard of number. Wow. And, and that's really kind of misleading when you consider the fact that a lot of those sacks are attributed to running the option and tackling the quarterback in the back end. But you're going to see right here on the replay, coming daily, coming around the outside, great speed. That's what he has. He is relentless. Ron Daly from Miami. roster do you to find number one he is everywhere and, and you're absolutely right and, and and what you're gonna see this guy can and just really make plays he is a fine arts major at Florida A&M carries a 3-4 watch right here you're gonna see coming from the outside right here and he's gonna do what we call wrong arm in the guy so he keeps containing you see him stuck the fullback right there shut the fullback and come in and make the play Incredible football player. Not only brawn, but brains. A 3-4 in fine arts and graphic arts. No question. Academic All-American. And he's getting pretty graphic out there right now, if you ask me, because I think he has four sacks on the game. Daly, along with Alex Fortson. I've been just pestering Troutman. A horror show for him. Our scoring recap once again. Gray, Marco Junius, 55 yards to open our scoring. And then Nunnally, floating down the middle from 18 yards away. And then Alan Suber, 61 yards on the receiving end. First quarter here, now the touchdown. Running free. The longest touchdown play of the year for Bethune Cookman. Back to live action. To blitz. Tuber against the blitz. Throws and complete. Miscommunication. He threw down the middle of the field. Person there with defensive backs. Shoving in the backfield. And Suber went down. And Jesus Sardou, number 71, not liking that that number one man keep running by him. So he had a little extra, a little something else to say to him. Uh, a lot of heat on the field right now. And it might be 74 at home, but it's 120 between the pipes. On fourth down, Zach Adrian to punt. Very busy first half for Zach Adrian. <laughs> As Florida and ins Isaac Brown set the field. And a couple over 50 yards. One 13 yard, which is this. And he's very inconsistent. Again, having trouble, you, know, you, you have to wonder if the coaches want him to really punt the ball away. 
But again, this young man, Adrian, is really struggling with the football. I think we've had now a punt of 14 yards and maybe a punt of 10 or 12 yards. Now look at this punt. 13-yarder earlier, and this one is a 20. And watch, what he's doing is aiming the ball. Instead of being able to go through his normal rotation, because this young man has a great leg, he's just kind of aiming the punts to try to angle the punts out of bounds. But so apparently something he has not practiced that much and is not very comfortable with doing. Awaiting moments of the first half. And Gray and the Rattler offense score one more time. He just gets what he can. Gets out of bounds at the 42-yard line been very impressed with his poise again never seeming to get flustered feeling having those natural instincts that when he gets pressured out of the backfield what he can do is and you saw right there when he kind of flattened out there basically he was trying to draw the defense in so that he could actually throw the ball downfield because that's the one thing they teach wide receivers if i'm scrambling you head to the house receivers on the backside, you come and do drags all that running around he got about a half a yard Great. Close the slant, incomplete, looking for Isaac Brown. He's going to come across the middle against Carlos Lawrence and a strong safety like Giddens, free safety Mathis. And you're in harm's way. No question about it. You got to you gotta play just like the Cosway. You got to pay a toll if you're going to come across the middle here. They run a little scissors route right here. Whoa. And you'll see right there, you wonder if he had a little gator arms there when you consider the fact that he saw the defense coming his way. Josh Oglesby, linebacker, wanted a shot at him. Now third down. Big snap. We're not only broken up incomplete. Rasheen Mathis was there. No flag. Perfectly played by Mathis. Playmaker to playmaker. This is a battle. This is what college football is all about. You're going to see right here, safety line up in the slot, and what you're going to see is he just does a little delay route right there, and again, watch him come around from the back side. Yeah, he might have had his hand on top a little early, but that's all right. When you're an All-American player, they give you those kind of breaks. Mathis to field this punt by T.J. Smith. will hit it at his 45. A line drive. Mathis catches it quickly at the 15. Runs into a wild catch. Spins around and is yanked out at the 12. Cedric Copeland on special teams flew down the field for Florida a and and that was a particularly good job of coverage when you consider the fact that that was a low line drive punt and normally when you get a low line drive punt that more, more, more. Look at me. Quinn Gray with two strikes two touchdown passes in the first half it's 13 to nothing Chops at this. Stanley from his nine. Up the back. 24 yard line. And that is all she wrote. On the stop, Saquon Doe. And we're going to go back to the touchdown here. What you're going to see right here is that Jaquay is going to basically run what we call skinny post, where he keeps it inside. Because he's lined up in the spot, he's got to keep it skinny. A skinny post. A skinny post. Right there, on the flag. Natalie, with his 38th career touchdown reception. Is he gonna, is that a record too? I mean, the guy's just got numbers all across the field. It was a run it has been for him. Mazoon Cookman today, a grand total of minus seven yards rushing. 18 total yards. That's a negative 18 total yards offensively. And again, it stems from the penetration that the defensive line from Florida A&M is getting. Getting penetration in the back, but really not giving Troutman an opportunity to come off the ball. It's shoved back. They met a stone wall today. 252 yards per game. Troutman. Right up the middle. And able to pop it up to across the 30 to 35 yard line. Marcus Goggins, the sophomore from Lake City. And he's a tough one. the first. Excuse me, he's a, he's a tough running back, too. When you think about this young man again, he's the lead back on uh, out of the Wyatt bone. And what he does is just hit it right up the middle. Offensive line did a great job on that play of just coming off the rock. And a 
whistles again. Please reset the game clock to 12.02. 12.02. Still having trouble with the clock. And it had took us close to 45 minutes to play that opening quarter. And we've had uh, the clock malfunction earlier. This is the second time. They, they're keeping the clock officially on the field. And while we have a moment, Florida Classic fans to order a video of this weekend's festivities. All the Jamie Dukes that you could possibly desire. <laughs> Log on to sunshinenetwork.com and click on to the World Wide Web. Call 1-800-776-7808. Available videos include Friday night's Step Show, which was a sight to see. <laughs> Absolutely. And the funny thing is that the, the stage down there, I thought there were going to be actually more people last night at the Step Show, and obviously I was wrong. But you want to talk about it again. This game is about pageant. There's no question about it. And they play some pretty good football in the process. First down now. Trotman tries to turn the corner. They string it out, and there is nowhere to go. Exceptional defense. Troy Hart up from the corner to flip Tarant Porter. And what you're going to see here, this is a good job of the offensive line coming off the ball. Great fake inside, but the quarterback's got to draw, go directly to the defender. And he didn't draw the defender, and you'll see right there, the receiver also on the outside there missed his block. Everybody's got to do their part. That's the one thing about when you're talking about running the option. If you've got receivers that are outside that are supposed to be blocking, they've got to block the cornerback. Run support, too, from Carlos Moore on Trotman. He had the quarterback, and Bethune, honestly, is looking for answers. Over is Trotman, and you can see Alvin Wyatt upstairs. Living his second time out of the first half. Building his players and rebuilding the program. Catch Florida Sports Profiles Friday at 8.30 on Sunshine. Alvin Wyatt, we saw how hot he was, upset the way that his offense has been shoved back by the defense of the Mandy right in Billy Joe, who has dominated this series. Won all four meetings between the two. And the key is, is basically you've got nine guys in the box. That's the whole key. Blitz coming. And he unloads. Again, Alex Fortson was knifing through the linebacker. He said to him frequently, and here Alan Suber unable to connect. It may be a situation that Alvin Wyatt now needs to play his freshman passing quarterback in this game because the ground attack, the option, has just been stuck. And again, you're going to see guys blitzing here. They're sending everybody. The thing is, what the game plan is, Coach Joe's game plan is this. I'm going to play man-to-man -man coverage outside on the two receivers. The Doom Cookman is not necessarily a passing team, of course, so therefore they're putting the pressure on their corners, but that also gives them the ability to shut it down because they got nine bodies inside the box. It's coming again. Here they come. Trump. He'll lose yardage on this again. You're talking about the top ground attack in the MIAC. That, I mean, snap after snap is being buried by the likes of Ebby Parsons here, the academic All-American. Because, he, but the thing is, if it wasn't Ebby, it was one of the other eight guys who were in the box. Again, what you're seeing, again, you see Bynum right there, downhill, coming at you in your living room. But again, there are so many bodies in green that you don't have the opportunity to make play. Zach Adrian following what is officially the sixth sack recorded in the first half by Florida A&M. And Adrian, directional kicking, boots this uh, out of bounds at about the 35-yard line for Florida A&M. Let's check in with Mark. Well, as you can imagine, Coach Alvin Wyatt, one of the more spirited coaches on the... Uh, ...was quite, shall we say, exercised 
profanity-laced tirade. He's told his defensive unit he wants them to step up. He wants them to step up and hit somebody. He wants them to play a lot more aggressive and put a helmet on somebody. So look for the Wildcats to relax the zone defense and go with a lot more man-to-man -man to try and play more aggressive. Guys? Now, Quinn, now you blitz. What you'll have here is man coverage. And you stack the box and Gray can scramble. What she does here, he'll get eight, nine yards a pop. Now, I don't know about profanity. I think I heard a darn or two in there, but I don't think I heard any A profanity. shucks. Yeah, there was one shucks absolutely. in there. And I think a, a Mickey Andrews that gummit, I think I heard also. <laughs> Second down, going without a huddle. His older brother, Angelo, here is Nunnally. Dangerous two after he catches is the senior from Miami. And that's, and that's the thing yak. about Yeah, that, exactly, exactly. Yak, yards after the catch. That's what he does best. The thing about him, he's a very shifty receiver. Some people have questioned his speed, saying that he's not a fast receiver. But the one thing I know, this young man gets open. First down now, 45-yard line. Swinging it out of the backfield to Nunnally. Nunnally to the 40. Good move there. Yards after catch. Yakety yak yak. Don't <laughs> look back. That's exactly what you're. And now over 1,000 yards in his senior season. Jaquay Nunnally. 1,011 yards receiving. A thousand yard rusher in March Banks, a thousand yard receiver in Nunnally. Offensive bounds in this system. That's the thing about it again. And what you do when you're spreading teams out, it actually allows the quarterback to see he's able to read the defense because they declare themselves. What's coming? Right? Pressure on him, and he manages to fight his way out of there for a yard. Josh Oglesby, linebacker, got him around the ankles. But you're going to have to put pressure on him, or he'll pick you apart with Nunnally, Brown, Junius, as he's done today. And that's what you talk about. What you want to look for is they blitz. And what they did, they spread it outside, and they blitz from the outside because Coach Wyatt said, I want pressure. And what you're going to see coming from the outside, the defensive back comes in and flushes them in from the inside out and makes the play. On second down. Right down the middle of the field and a drop at the 17-yard line. Incomplete, intended for T.J. Hines. And you see the All-American in my mind, Math is sitting there waiting on him again. What you've got to do, T.J. Hines caught, tried to catch the ball with his with his body. You've got to use your hands when you're a wide receiver. You've got to look that ball in, and you've got to catch it with your hands because that plastic on your shoulder pads will make the ball ricochet off. Third down now. Here comes the blitz again. And loaded it up. Motion up front, Quentin Lewis, the nose guard, number 92. Here to uh, jump the snap count. Let's talk about the maturation of a quarterback. Contact by the defense, five-yard penalty, third down. Quinn looking to steal himself a few extra yards, and you'll see right there, he just works the cadence. Watch him bob his head a little bit. There was a no-play call right there, but what he's doing is working the cadence. Now third and five. Trey floats. Nunnally stumbled at the 15-yard line, and it's nearly intercepted now. Jaquay will protest that he was interfered with. The ball was in the air and he was knocked down. But there's not a flag to be seen. And I think what you're going to have on the play is basically in inadvertent contact. And you'll see, you talk about getting a break right there. Shot was there wide open for the interception and knocks the ball out right there. There was number 12. Give it to me. It was number 12. <laughs> I had it. So there will be uh, Juan Vasquez. He missed earlier from 47. And this a 42-yard try. Just one for six this year outside 40 yards, and uh, you can see that the length is a challenge for him. Must be the wind or something. I mean, the, the humidity here or something, because this young man has a lively... Oh, I stopped. That's right, I don't talk about kicks. That's but he's right. got a lively leg, and so apparently what's going on is that there's something in the air or something, but he's not getting the, the oomph that he normally gets on the ball. Missed twice, as he explains to the staff. He's also uh, misfired on an extra point. Tough day for the freshman so far. 
But Florida A&M protecting a two-touchdown lead. They bring the senior back in, Troutman. And the thing is, the offensive line's got to do a, a good job of giving him opportunities. You see right there, one for four, seven yards. Still having problems, and you see some confusion. They're trying to get his players lined up. Going with a four-receiver set. And the Wyatt ball, a double slot option. Perfected, you would say, by Georgia Southern. This whistle blows here. Remember when Irk Russell, Statesboro, Georgia, had the great run. Won national championships there and won double Time A. This is the offense that they Cooper. use. This is their third. In fact, Greg out Ross, time out the wide receivers coach, was the uh, quarterback on those Georgia Southern teams. Booster. John today. And this is the guy who's really got you got to give a little credit to. Eric Hayes, one of my teammates at Florida State. Eric Hayes, an all-star defensive lineman, a mean, look at that, look at his face. You wouldn't want to run into him anywhere. I don't care if he's on the first view at First Missionary Baptist Church. That's a guy you don't want to mess with because he was a great football player. And the thing that he's done in talking to Coach Joe is that he said he's really got his players really playing hard. They play with great leverage. And you can see right here, doing a great job holding Thune Cookman to minus eight. Eight yards in total offense. Minus 15 on the ground. A rushing attack that averages 250 yards a game. And it's lost 15 yards. Troutman guns us over the middle. Biggest play of the first half. The completion to Porter on first down. The senior, Terran Porter, for 14 yards. And here's the new Wyatt formation right here. This is the new Wyatt Bone formation. Wyatt Bone right. What you're seeing right now is the re receiver running inside and running a nice little, little inseam right there. And what he does is he spreads the defense out so they can make some plays down the football field. Terran Porter, just his 10th reception of this his senior year. One miss, not two, however. Shedrick Copeland, the free safety, Jerron Daly up. Copeland playing up there in the box, the freshman from Miami at Killian High School. Again, going back to the, the three or four receivers set, trying to find a way to make something happen. Coach White doing a good job of changing things up. And I want you to see right at the end of the play, Mr. Daly coming in with a hit with, as shall I say, some bad intentions. A lot of uh, fierceness and bad blood on both sides of the field between these two. Second down. Lost a yard on the play. Dropping. Again feels the pressure. Dumps this too far for Javon Henry to reach it. The Crescent City, Florida freshman uh, ended up uh, on his knees. It's a third down. And again, a little too much excitement. You'll see Coach Wyatt coming in here on the sidelines here. Again, not happy with the execution of his offense. Right here again, they're going to blitz him. You see right here coming in late. You see the defense coming, the defender coming in to blitz from the outside. And again, just a little bit too much juice on the ball. Third down now and 11. And Bethune is looking to convert for the first time. 0 for 6 in third down situations. to the 20-yard line. Stanley, touchdown! Not only do they convert, but Bethune is on the board. 61 yards. And the guy that makes it happen, I know you're going to go all the way down the field and look at all the pretty running that he did, but you got to bring it back into the backfield to check out what number 45 Javon Henry does to allow the quarterback to get the ball off. What right here, you're going to see trips right here, trips left to the bottom here, and what you're going to see is just great execution. He's going to come across and run just a post. You see the receiver jumps him on, defensive back jumps him on the inside, and then there's no substitute for speed. And look at this effort. Tremendous effort to get in for the score. A third back in the football game. The extra point by Danny Mathis is good. 61 yards from Alan Silver. 
Or Antonio Stanley. That'll put a little charge in you. Great execution, a good throw and catch. Something Bethune Cookman really needed. Well, the Cats with some claws here. Strike again on third down. And he's running free. Take over a the peek middle. right here. You see John Henry right here pick up the block, and that's what allows the play to happen. Sometimes we get caught up in the, the guys running downfield, but it's the guys who do all the dirty work that really make it happen. For Stanley, his fifth touchdown reception of the year, but none has been longer for uh, Wildcat fans. That is the longest touchdown strike of the year, and it couldn't come at a better time. Sometimes opportunities are hard to find. Mike Kidd, picking off. Field at the 25-yard line by Nimbley, who spins. And stumbles up to the 20-yard line. He's never down. You have to sit on him and hold him down. Oh, absolutely. As you heard Coach Joe talk about grabbing the, the Bobcats by their, or, or Wildcats by their ears, he's a guy you definitely have to grab that rattler by the throngs because he's a young man who can really make it happen. And the thing about him is, as you say, you never know when he's down. you got to wait until the whistle blows. Now, Gray, strong first half numbers. Huh? 206 yards, two TDs. Posting numbers. That's what you call it. it in this formation. Across the pitch. The march back. Out to the 34 yard line for OJ Marchbanks. Been an outstanding year for him, the junior college transfer. Knocked off his feet by Rasheed Mathis. And he's a man, so he's one of those backs that just run hard. That's what he does best. Tripped up inside by Willie Pert is March Banks. The most yards gained in a season. Kwame Vidal for uh, Florida A&M. Back in 1995, last time they had a thousand yard rushing. Five seasons since O.J. March Banks. And the Rattlers have been able to post numbers like this. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, when you're carrying 230, 240 pounds and you get up ahead of steam, there's going to be quite a collision. I just I was looking, I was looking at the, the, the numbers on the kid, and I saw him yesterday at the banquet, and the one thing I thought about, he's a biscuit away from 240. There's no question about that. Great job of Gray checking the play, recognizing, and watch the block right here. Everybody's All-American. There he is again, making a block downfield. Isaac Brown. Able to snare this in front of Carlos Lawrence, the senior corner. And now uh, here's Florida A&M and Gray beginning to march, beginning to move the ball, put together a drive, and take some of the uh, electricity and momentum away from the Wildcats after that 60 one yard touchdown pass. Too high for Nunnally on second down. And you notice that you'll see number 16 on your screen right there. Let's let's put the playmaker on the playmaker. Two All-Americans going at it right there. This young man, again, leading the nation in interceptions, just a, a fine football player. The coaches, the one thing they talk about, very smart young man. And I, he looks like he's having some shoulder pad problems. You better strap it up, big boy, because they're coming again. Matched up. Press coverage on Nunnally in the slot. First ball. Picked up on the bounce by Gray. A play on over the middle. Jonius makes the catch. First down for the air mark. It's as if the two Cookman. All they say is a fumble. And there they have the football. He fumbled the ball. Did Marco Jonius. Recovered by James Bush. Big, and the Cavs. Big plays. That's what this defense has been about the entire season. Again, the key to the Bethune Cookman Wildcats success all season has not resided in that in the in the wide ball, even though it's been very consistent. It has resided clearly in the defense. Oh, look at the play. Was he down? The junior's fumbled. And 
Lawrence that fell on the ball. Well, the first turnover of the game. And Bethune, which had struck for a 61-yard touchdown bomb. The Stanley has the football right back. And it's the man who's ruined Alan Silver. Down he goes. Dropped by Gerard Daly. The seventh sack of the first half. Wow. An unheard of number. Wow. And, and that's really kind of misleading when you consider the fact that a lot of those sacks are attributed to running the option and tackling the quarterback in the back end. But you're going to see right here on the replay, coming daily, coming around the outside, great speed. That's what he has. He is relentless. Ron Daly from Miami. Or do you to find number one? He is everywhere. And, and you're absolutely right. And, and, and what you're going to see, this guy can and just really make plays. He is a fine arts major at Florida AM. Carries a 3 4. Watch right here. You're going to see coming from the outside right here. And he's going to do what we call wrong arm in the guy. So he keeps containing. You see him stuck the fullback right there, shut the fullback, and come in and make the play. Incredible football player. Not only brawn, but brains. A 3-4 in fine arts and graphic arts. No question. Academic All-American. And he's getting pretty graphic out there right now, if you ask me, because I think he has four sacks on the game. Daly, along with Alex Fortson. I've been just pestering Troutman. A horror show for him. Our scoring recap once again. Gray, Marco Junius, 55 yards to open our scoring. And then Nunnally, floating down the middle from 18 yards away. And then Alan Suber, 61 yards on the receiving end. First quarter here, now the touchdown. Running free. The longest touchdown play of the year for Bethune Cookman. Back to live action. Two blitz. Super against the blitz. Throws and complete. Miscommunication. He threw down the middle of the field. The person there with defensive backs shoving in the backfield. And Super went down. And Jesus Sardou, number 71, not liking that that number one man keep running by him. So he had a little extra, a little something else to say to him. Uh, a lot of heat on the field right now. And it might be 74 at home, but it's 120 between the pipes. On fourth down, Zach Adrian to punt. Very busy first half for Zach Adrian. <laughs> As Florida and ms Isaac Brown set the field. Then a couple over 50 yards. 113 yards. And Pooch is this. And he's been very inconsistent. Again, having trouble. And you, know, you, you have to wonder if the coaches want him to really punt the ball away. But again, this young man, Adrian, is really struggling with the football. I think we've had now a punt of 14 yards and maybe a punt of 10 or 12 yards. Now look at this punt. 13-yarder earlier, and this one is a 20. And watch, what he's doing is aiming the ball. Instead of being able to go through his normal rotation, because this young man has a great leg, he's just kind of aiming the punts to try to angle the punts out of bounds. But so, apparently something he has not practiced that much and is not very comfortable with doing. Awaiting moments of the first half. And Gray and the Rattler offense score one more time. He just gets what he can. Gets out of bounds at the 42-yard uh, line. Been very impressed with his poise. Again, never seeming to get flustered, feeling having those natural instincts that when he gets pressured out of the backfield, what he can do is, and you saw right there, when he kind of flattened out there, basically he was trying to draw the defense in so that he could actually throw the ball downfield because that's the one thing they teach wide receivers. If I'm scrambling, you head to the house. Receivers on the backside, you come and do drags. All that running around, he got about a half a yard. Gray. Throws the slant. 
incomplete, looking for Isaac Brown. You're going to come across the middle against Carlos Lawrence and a strong safety like Giddens, free safety Mathis. And you're in harm's way. No question about it. You got to you gotta pay just like the Cosway. You got to pay a toll if you're going to come across the middle here. They run a little scissors route right here. Whoa. And you'll see right there, you wonder if he had a little gator arms there when you consider the fact that he saw the defense coming his way. Josh Oglesby, linebacker, wanted a shot at it. Now third down. Big snap. We're not a Broken up incomplete. Rasheen Mathis was there. No flag. Perfectly played by Mathis. Playmaker to playmaker. This is a battle. This is what college football is all about. You're going to see right here, safety line up in the slot. And what you're going to see is he just does a little delay route right there. And again, watch him come around from the back. So, yeah, he might have had his hand on top a little early, but that's all right. When you're an All-American player, they give you those kind of breaks. Mathis to field this punt by T.J. Smith. will hit it at his 45. Catches it quickly at the 15, runs into a wild cat, spins around and is yanked out at the 12. Cedric Copeland on special teams flew down the field for Florida a &M. And that was a particularly good job of coverage when you consider the fact that that was a low line drive punt. And normally when you get a low line drive punt, that gives the return man time to field the ball and make something happen. 31-yard punt. He lost three on this return. Again, you see right here, there's no one around him, so that's you know that's a difficult situation when you consider the fact that, again, those low-line punts don't give the coverage team time to get down the field. But again, great coverage by the Rattles, Rattlers coverage team. Carry Javon Henry. Good job of mixing it up there when you consider the fact that, again, not having a lot of success running the football by the Wildcats, but what they're doing is they're mixing up, they're spreading the formation out and hitting the fullback right downhill at you right now. Great, great chess match between two great coaches. Darren Herndon leads him out over the football. Preserve the clock. They're going to go into their two-minute offense here and try to get down the field and get a score. And again, we got a 13-7 ball game here, baby. Again, good job of poise right here. You're going to see Javon coming from the outside here. But again, good field by Patel here. And what he does, just tuck the ball. And I like how he's got it in the outside arm. That's right. Keep it outside, boy. See the size of the crowd and the bright lights here at this 21st annual Florida Classic. Now the momentum at the moment. Many moments in the first half by the third. They're starting to move the ball. They nearly turned it over. Ball is on the ground. And the Wildcats recovered. And I believe he ran into his own man. Alex Fortson says that he had recovered for Florida A&M, but Alvin Wyatt turns the turnovers. The key minimizing mental mistakes and the turnovers. Florida A&M has not been able to benefit from a cat turnover today. Or why do you have to believe as he gets near his halftime here, he feels he's taken Florida A&M's best shot? Oh, no question. Half. No question about it. And the thing is, again, his kids came out a little bit too excited. And, you know, because they want to win so bad, you see right there Coach Joe up in the stands there, calm and poised as always. But the Bethune Cooper Wildcats came out a little bit too excited, not playing the way Coach Wyatt would want them to play. And that's the reason why they struggled a little bit early. But, again, because they've been able to settle down in there. And, again, this defense, one of the top defenses in America has been able to sustain themselves and keep the offense in the game. That's the reason why we got a 13-7 score. And again, the time is being kept by our referee and Jerome Bogger today on the field. Some early clock problems if you're not with us. Some 
early offensive problems, too. Or if you're a rattler, some tremendously dominant defensive play. And some blown opportunities offensively have to field position the first drive at the 50. And this quarterback rotation, this tandem, blitz coming, Troutman scrambles, takes off, flags down, and he's down to at the 37-yard line. The linebacker Alex Fortson was blitzing and may have jumped the snap count, come across the line of scrimmage early. And I believe you're going to have two feeling maybe holding by the film equipment, or excuse me, by the family rallies in the, in the secondary. As for it's in he along with Daly. Holding, holding is the on the offense. Call. All side. On and the that's defense. the offside call on Fortson. Until it's all set for replay second down. They offset. He along with Daly have appeared as if they know the snap count <laughs> throughout the first half. And again, and that's one of those advantages when you talk about a loud stadium. You have the advantage because that's the one thing that, you know, I remember for sure that Eric Hayes knows better than anybody as defensive line coach for the family rattles is movement on the ball. And a defense and the coach basically just sits there on a knee and they just play with the defensive line, putting the ball on the ground as part of one of their, their workout drills is to make sure that the defense moves on the football, not on sound. the backfield. That was actually a lateral to Stanley, and Stanley shoved out of bounds at the 40-yard line. He owns the lone touchdown so far for Bethune-Cookman. We have seen both offenses use a variety of wrinkles, and here is Troutman and what is officially a lateral to Antonio. And you're absolutely right, but this guy's their playmaker. He's a guy that you've got to get the ball to because he's electric. Watch him pick up and put those feet down. Again, you can't touch this young man. I mean, great football player. Look at his feet. Really reminds me of a guy, Eric Metcalf, that used to play for the Cleveland Browns years ago. Senior from Miami and Jackson High School. Uncovered, Game right? Right here. Uncovered. Nobody on him. Robin sees that. Pressure going back the other way with a lot of room to run to the 40-yard line and out of bounds. Troutman has awakened. Maybe the rust for Patel, not having played in a couple of weeks, is finally shaking off. And, I, and you, you talk about rust and you talk about excitement. Again, watch right here. You're going to see right here the offensive line does a good job for the most part getting protection. You'll see the guys coming from here. He maintains the integrity of the pocket there as he rolls out. But nothing shows. So what does he do? Tuck the ball and run. And again, got the ball. Smart kid in the outside arm. And more importantly, gets out of bounds. Right in front of Saquon Doe. So Troutman. Firing this way. First down, 19-yard line. So a 22-yard gain is followed by this first down pickup. And again, great execution. What you're going to see is basically just a, a little out route right here by the underneath receiver in the slot. Does a good job of, again, getting up the field. Should have got out of bounds, young man, but that's all right. And is uh, 22 and 12 in two snaps. Final minute of the first half, and Troutman for the end zone throws just too far. Intended for Eric Lash, the back of the end zone. Stop the clock. Again, just effort. You know, the, you know, early on, you looked at Troutman, struggled. I mean, really struggled this entire game, and then he's really come alive here late. You see right here on the route, does a good job. He's wide open right there. He's saying, get me the ball. Get me the ball, baby. Let me lay out for it. Oh! Are you all right? You okay? I'll be okay. You'll be all right. I'll be all right. Here, bud. You look good. Jamie Dukes, Mark Gray, I'm Paul Kennedy. What a first half this has been. And the halftime show is just ahead. Troutman, again scrambling, darting around. Jerron Daly to the 15-yard line, or close to it. All of a sudden, he's rediscovered his quicks. <laughs> and you're absolutely right. That's exactly what he's rediscovered. Again, this young man struggled the entire first half. And now when you look at the total offense, the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats have taken the lead in total offense in the first half. Now, you're going to see right here on the replay, nothing on the outside there. And what he does, as you said, and watch the quicks right there, using his hands. Get that ball with the outside arm kick. That's all right. Get out of bounds. Excellent execution. The marching on Florida A&M. Here will come the ninth play of this drive. 
Bethune having been dominated. Oh, they jump early. Hazer Sadui, the left tackle, number 71, jumped. But after Florida A&M had dominated Sardui and the Cats, it is possible that Bethune Cookman could lead at intermission. Absolutely. Third down. And Daly is really giving him fits on the outside because of that great speed. He's trying to get out and set out and make it happen. Hey, Jamie, look at this at halftime. The marching 100. Absolutely. We get to see the bands. I'm going to get out there and just kind of shake my little rump myself. You know, I got a little big beer belly, so I have to worry about sweating myself with that. But then also, you get a chance to see also the Bethune Footman Wildcats. The one, pride. Absolutely one of the finest bands in the land. We will have every minute of both shows for you. A special presentation at halftime. Trotman for the end zone in the lead. Tie ball game. Antonio Stanley for a second time. And you called it. That's exactly right. The Bethune Cookman Wildcats are going wild. Great play calling by offensive coordinator from Bethune Cookman. Coach uh, Raymond Gross has done a good job of just really working things out for his team. Zuber had hit Stanley earlier. This time, it's Troutman as Stanley scores from 22 yards away. The extra point to hand Bethune-Cookman the lead at halftime. It is good off the toe of Danny Mathis. Astonishing. Midway through the second quarter, Bethune Cookman had minus eight yards of total offense. And again, you talk about script. Mr. Trotman right here settling in and watch him just fire a strike under pressure. Great job for the touchdown. Mark Gray talked about it at the beginning of the game. The question is, what would Sam you do if they got popped in the mouth? Well, we're going to get an opportunity to find out right now because the Bethune Cookman Wildcats are leading and trying to head into the halftime with a lead. Two second quarter touchdown strikes from the two-headed quarterback, Patel Troutman, following the freshman in Allen Subert. And it is the passing attack rather than the rushing game that has Bethune Cookman out in front. Uh, you can feel the buzz through this stadium there. I think they're stunned about the turnaround here. And a big part of that is, again, is because FAMU basically expected this entire game for Bethune Cooper. Their game plan was working. They expected them to run the option. Now they're in the process of what they're doing is they're throwing the ball, and the secondary of FAMU doesn't know what to do right now. Here comes to Quay Nettleman. He'll barely reach the 15-yard line. What was Alvin Wyatt saying earlier in the week? We lost last year, 63 to 14. I promise you this: there will not be a 63 to 14 score this year. And you see right there, calm, cool, and collected. There, Coach Joe again, just the master right there. What can you say? I mean, it's I mean, so. Their personalities are so different. Oh, yeah, and, that, and that's the thing about it. You know, they say opposite to track because the thing about it, these two men have a, a growing and, and loving relationship, very respectful, and, you know, and, and you got the flash and pop uh, of Coach Wyatt, and then you've got the quiet confidence of Coach Billy Jim. Quinn Gray, who has thrown two touchdown passes of his own, downs it on one day. The difference in these two teams, a missed extra point. We are at halftime. A head coach in Billy Joe gathers up his notes and heads to the dressing room. And again, you notice he's not upset. He's not he's not throwing down papers. He's not yelling at anybody. Again, that's why he's won so many Coach of the Year awards because he's a poised individual. On the other side of that, you've got Coach Wyatt, who is all about fire. I mean, that's what he is. That's how this team lives and dies. They are about fire, and the Bethune Cookman Wildcats are leading the FAMU Rattlers 14-13. A professorial approach, analytical approach to this game. Coach to the National Football League for a while. And on the other side, Mark Gray, the very inspired Alvin Wyatt, his team in front at halftime. 
Guys, I'm with Coach Wyatt. Coach, it was a tale of two halves in the first half. It seemed like Fam, you got off, got going early, and you took over at the latter stage of the first half. Well, we definitely did that. They, they got some big plays on us, but we had some mental mistakes. Guys didn't get the call. They were able to get behind us in our zone defense. That should never, ever happen. But we were able to, you know, to fight back against uh, adversities that was uh, unfavorable to us. And when those circumstances hit you and you're able to come back like we did, uh, I think we're on our way to do the things that we need to do to be successful. Coach, how is it for you in particular? I know you're wearing two hats today. Pete Adrian, now the defensive coordinator of Chicago's XFL team. That means you have to call the D signals. How's that working out? Well, I'm calling them both. I'm calling the offensive signal and the defensive signal. I try to let the offense uh, guys go a little bit, but uh, we couldn't get it that we were struggling. We were trying to be stubborn. We were running the ball. We should have been passing the ball. Finally, Adams, Alice, Sue, and Patel taught me came to life, and that's what we needed. I don't mind doing what I'm doing as long as we're successful at doing what we're doing. You guys play with such emotion. How do you keep everything under control for another 30 minutes in the second half? Go in right now. Don't let anybody say anything to them. Tell them to continue to do the things that they were, do, they were doing in the first half, but do it just a little bit better. All right, this is a game. It's a long way from over. Fam, you have a great offense that can strike, strike on you. We just got to be able to fight back like the cats we are and get this championship. Thanks a lot, Coach Wyatt. Coach Alvin Wyatt, head coach of Bethune-Cookman, they leave 14-13 at the end of the first half of the 21st Florida Classic. Guys? And our halftime show is next in this 21st annual showdown, the Florida Classic, and it has been just that between <laughs> the Rattlers and the Cats. A barn burner, a humdinger, and whatever you want to call it, that's exactly what it is. I feel like going out and playing right now. <laughs> Tape him up. Alvin Wyatt's Cats with two touchdowns, both to Antonio Stanley. The Cats are back. Our halftime show next. Ready for football. Oh, what a two quarters this should be. <laughs> Just an extra point. Miss separating the two. And here we go. Bethune's Michael Kidd. Kicks it away. This is Nimmerly. Working his way out across the 30. Bounces outside. Back to the 35. Still on his feet. To the 39-yard line. Wow. A 34-yard return. Here again on the sideline, Mark Gray. A lot, guys. You know... Bethune-Cookman comes into this contest minus defensive coordinator Pete Adrian. Adrian took the job with the Chicago Enforcers of the XFL, and that means double duty for head coach Alvin Wyatt. Wyatt not only had to make the defensive game plan for the defensive unit, but he's also calling defensive changes on the fly, as well as making offensive adjustments as well. Well, the thing that he doesn't want his team to adjust to is the lack of intensity that they came out with at the beginning of this contest. Conversely, on the Florida A&M side, it really is going to come down to Quinn Gray. Gray, a streaky passer who, when he's hot, he's very good, but he was sort of lukewarm in the first half. So watch the success of Gray. And again, watch Bethune Cookman. They're going to attack vertically their vertical passing game. They feel extremely confident that they can make some things happen attacking Florida AM deep downfield. Let's go back up to you guys in the booth. All right, Mark, here is Quinn Gray. And again, it's Marchbanks. O.J. Marchbanks, who in the uh, first half carried the ball uh, for 25 yards on a half dozen carries, first two quarters of play. And I think something else you have to add to the keys to this game is going to be really what does Bethune-Cookman do offensively. The bone is not working, so what you got to do is continue to throw the ball. Pass for 230 yards in the first half. And now Marchbank, good hard run. This gets him close to 15 yards for Marchbanks, the junior college transfer from Santa Fe JC. And here it is coming right in your living room, right here. You're going to see right here just a dive, but this is what you call an attitude check. And I don't know whether Coach Billy Joe said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to try to humiliate him. But right now, you see right there, big old gay. Boy, look, he's a romper stomper. Look at that. Great. Throw. Look at that arm strength. Incomplete. A flag is down to the nine-yard line. Isaac Brown was the deepest receiver. He was at the 15-yard line. He stumbled. But Gray threw that ball close to 50 yards with a flick of the wrist. And that's exactly right. What we talked about earlier, this young man's arm is hot. Again, 6'4", 230 pounds. And I believe we're going to have, FAMU's going to have their plethora and their choice of penalties to choose from. Roughing the quarterback, I believe, is one. And also pass interference uh, down the field. Jerome Boger. 
Our referee today is assigned by the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. And pass interference, the call against Bethune. Personal foul call against Florida A&M. They should offset for Billy Joe. There, he was a track All-American for Jumbo Elliott at Villanova. He used to throw the shot. Did Billy Joe? That's what you call an athlete. You put the shot the rather than throw. <laughs> he was in the Pan American Games in Brazil after the back in the 60s. Was Billy yeah, Joe before he foul. went on to star in the AFL, All American penalty. Football League. After the penalty enforcement, it'd be first. And was on Dick Vermeil's coaching staff. Is it important, and I guess, obviously, he believes not, that your head coach be on the sideline? He's had success coaching from the press box. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the first time I've actually seen a coach in the booth. But at the same time, again, coaches want to see the game. that He has the vision from up top. Can't see things down low. The ball spotted at the 38-yard line. First possession of the second half for Gray and the Rattlers from Tallahassee. Archfang. Play action to him. One-handed pitch. Juggle. He held on to it. The Quay Nunnally to the six-yard line. And that was six receptions right there. And you got to add them all up. He caught that ball <laughs> at least six times. So let's put it down in the stack books. They're right back to the line of scrimmage as well. First and goal now. A gain of 31. Quarterback draw. Great job. Clear out the backfield, which means you move the linebackers out. You send your running back out to the right. Great play call by Coach Billy Joe. Gray takes the Rattlers right down the field to try and recapture the momentum they enjoyed in the first quarter of this game. A six-yard touchdown run for Quinn Gray. And again, this is about an attitude check. If you notice that this... The FAMU Rattlers, they ran the football predominantly on this particular uh, on this particular drive, trying to set the tone. And they are shaking Wildcat being helped off the field. Anthony Hubbard, the inside linebacker, their leading tackler, shaken up. And he is a man. I mean, an absolute man in there. Plays with bad intentions. We like that. Going for two now. Hubbard leaves the field. Gray with March Banks in the backfield in a four receiver formation. Two point conversion try. You'd be surprised they ran it again. Starts down the line. Tux will not get in. So the two point conversion try fails. Josh Oglesby flying up the linebacker. So a 31 yard strike. Gray. Juggling job by Jaquay Nunnally. Set up the touchdown run. You see right here, how, how many times, I want to count how many times he caught the ball, because this needs to go in there. One, two, three, four, five. Hey, five reception right there, because he's fighting the guy named Arnold Action Jackson from the University of Louisville for the all-time record. And Florida A&M, for the record, retakes the lead. Hard to believe Daddy's going to be 70. Oh, he looks good. Must be all that clean living. Yeah, right. <laughs> 70. Think about all he's seen. Mm -hmm. Is there a new Walt Disney World? Come have the time of your life and celebrate in a magical place that celebrates family. Well, young blood, now I've seen everything. But I haven't. Come on. Call 1407W-DISNEY and make your dream come true. Change is good, and saving 25% on great trips to great destinations makes it better than ever. Everyone at Amtrak guarantees it. What a difference the train makes. Call 1-800-USA-RAIL for details and save 25%. Coming up this week on Fresh Air Fighting.
Don't just watch the game, get involved online. Visit our homepage, click on message board, choose a forum, read messages from fellow sports fans, and post your own. Just one more way, Sunshine Network lets you be a part of the game. Get online at sunshinenetwork.com. Florida A&M with a statement to this capacity crowd. Citrus Bowl Stadium in Orlando. Five plays with the opening kickoff of the second half. And Quinn Gray calls his own number for the touchdown. And I'd be very interested to see what the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats do. Coach Alvin Wyatt, how he comes back offensively. What's he going to do? Is he going to go back to the more prone run formations? Or is he going to look to throw the ball like he, like he has and have great success? Aaron Shepard fields a very short kickoff. 36-yard line and a very good field position now for Bethune Cookman. And I guess Alvin White coordinating the offense and the defense was also helping out with the band too at, at halftime. Yeah, I wondered if he wants a raise. You know, you think about it. I mean, everything he does, you'll see right there. Patel Trotman coming back into the game, and I still think he's a little bit sore. Let's keep an arm on on that shoulder, that that non-throwing shoulder, his left shoulder, because again, Bethune Cook. I mean, excuse me, the, the Rattlers have really been taking shots at. Him. In that double slot option, now trips to the top of your screen. Three receivers on first down. Wyatt Bone left. Up walks Morrison. Flags fly. The Wildcats jump prior to the snap. Torrance Green, number 78, gets a little antsy there. Prior to the snap. False start on the offense. Big senior for Miami. First down. Sardui jumped earlier in the first half. The tackle on the... Uh, other side of the field. And you can see right here, he's going to get a little flinch right here out of your tackle right here. He, he saw the flincher coming in and he wanted to get a little jump start on him. Uh, 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 uh. Stay right in there. Old coaches tell you. Old teammate Brad Bernard done a good job with this offensive one. He will say to it, mental mistakes, I can't stand. It's a he can't scoop to midfield. Out of bounds, 45-yard line. That is uh, a gain on the play of most of 22. And the thing is, this is all predicated on the law breaking contain. What he does there, nothing open down the field. You see him flip the ball around. And again, he just tucks the ball and looks to run. And watch the burst. Watch the acceleration you see right there. Accelerating past the defensive lineman there. Great job of acceleration. Good execution. We're going to be 25 officially for the Charles Trotman. His biggest scramble of the day. Healthy again and so dangerous for the top ground attack, we'll remind you, in the Mia. Good fake. And now the late pitch to Stanley to the 20-yard line. 12-yard line. And a flag down. Was that a forward lateral? That is exactly right. They're going to call that back because it was a forward lateral. Great design play. Coach Wyatt pulling all the tricks out. All right. But then again, Bethune Cookman is signaling, oh, personal foul face man. It looked to be from our vantage point as if Troutman, when he waited late on the pitch, lateral and forward to Stanley. Yeah, I don't think there's any question you're going to see right here. We're going we're to draw a line right down the line. Great call right there. And you're going to see right there, face mask inside. But he's going to pitch the ball. Watch the ball go this way. That is clearly a forward pass. That's a forward lateral. And the gain on the play is of 38 yards. So it is a huge non-call in this game. A touchdown for Bethune. He retakes the lead. Coming. Down he goes, back at the 10-yard line. And that is how this game began. Joe Sanders, the inside linebacker on this stop, number 40. Basically going back to the op going back to the option from the shotgun formation. See him pulling the guard to left there, but again, great speed, and you'll see right there. Have a cola on me. <laughs> oh, it was Anthony Cola. Little help from Jerron Daly, who had eight tackles in the first half. Number one. Austin back to the 10-yard line. Second down, second and goal. Full house back here. This is standard option. They pitch. And for the corner, and the touchdown, touchdown, Marquise Williams. And again, it goes back to what formation do you come out? You can't come out in the bone. 
In the first series, you saw right there, what they came out in was this formation where it was back to the wide open, three receiver sets to the bottom, uh, and splitting one off the back side. But in this particular case, what they do is they bring an extra offensive lineman at the point of attack because, you know, they don't have tight ends on the platoon cooking Wildcat team. We don't need tight ends. This is getting wild. Here in the outset of the third quarter, it takes him but four plays to score after a five-play march by Florida A&M. The young sophomore, Marquise Williams, only his third touchdown of the season. But it moves Bethune ever closer to the MEAC championship. Ah, uh, the court... By class, the attendance to the king and queen of Florida A&M, the undergraduate population. So much pomp and pageantry to this game. Yeah, and who came up with that funky wave they do these days? I you think know, the I, Queen of England. Is that, is that what it, Yeah. I just, I just never quite got that. Well, that was part of the revolution, Jamie. That's one of the reasons the United States revolted. I appreciate that. Yeah, it was part of the history lesson. So well. <laughs> I kind of like it. Well, fireworks here, kind of over his shoulder, and he'll keep it, I believe, uh, in the end zone. Took but a minute and 15 seconds for <laughs> Bethune-Cookman to score and recapture the lead, 21 to 19. And what a great game. You're going to see right here, basically what you're going to see, all offensive linemen right here, defensive linemen in the game again. Poor job right here by these two guys of getting to the pitch, but anytime you run the option, you've got to have someone always responsible for the pitch man. Assignment football. Right here in your living room, boys. Check it out. Great job right there by Trotman of getting the ball and drawing the defenders in, and he passes the ball to Williams for the touchdown. Now can Quinn Gray answer. Penalty marker down. And uh, we'll sort this out. Had our share of penalties uh, this afternoon, haven't we? Yeah. A lot of hankies on the ground today. Quite a few. Penalties in the... Uh, and they're discussing this here. There's Billy Joe. Our field judge, Michael Carter, along with referee Bulger. Please disregard the flag. There was no illegal substitution on the defense since the ball was not snapped. First down. So, there you go. You know, offensively, you can only break the huddle with 11. Defenses do have one slight advantage over the offense. They can substitute late, where offenses cannot. Once uh, they've come out of their huddle. But they're going up against a no-huddle attack here. They trap inside to draw the march bank. Very well read by Bethune Cookman's Quentin Lewis, a senior from Tallahassee. And a good job. Earlier you heard me talking about in the first half how Florida a and was getting in the backfield defensively. Now what you're seeing is great penetration by the Bethune Cookman defensive line. And again, this is the number five defense right there. You see big number 92. Reggie White wore that. Stuff in the middle, setting up the screen, which they do. Marchbank gets a block to the 30. Close to the 40-yard line. We have a coaching clinic going on right here. Two great generals calling plays back and forth. Alvin Wyatt with his offense, figuring it out early on with Fam you blitzing him up the middle there. And then you got the great one, Billy Joe, who's won more hardware as coach of the year, calling a great game as well. A gain of 22 on the play. And the pressure that has to be on Alvin Wyatt with his defensive coordinator Pete Adrian leaving especially this week uh, that, that he would be in a position that, that he has to oversee the offense and the defense and be calling plays in both lines of scrimmage. And I had a coach who did that, Jerry Glamble. It's a very difficult thing to do because you want to coach guys up and you see different things, but you can't do it. I believe the ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Yes, it was. Knocked down. Incomplete. But Jerry Glanville, when I was with the Atlanta Falcons, he called offense and defense, and it's very difficult. But think about it. When you want to talk to your players about adjustments that need to be made, well, you can't do it because you got to call the defense. And so it's a very difficult situation. He's done a great job of matching that today. So the man who leads the NAAC in total offense, Quinn Gray, sets up and throws over the head of O.J. Marchbanks, and the kicking unit will come on on fourth down. 
And again, it all comes from pressure, just great pressure from the Bethune-Cookman defense doing a good job of getting to Gray right now, coming from the outside. On is T.J. Smith to punt. His best effort, as you see, of 46 yards in the first half. As he kicks to Rasheed Mathis. Standing alone in his 20. Flagged down. This tumble down to the 25. And a mark down dead at the 21-yard line. It'll be down there by Florida A&M. And another hanky on the sidelines. Thrown along the line of scrimmage. Uh, offsides on either team wouldn't affect a first down. It's procedure the call against Florida A&M. And uh, I believe Alvin Wyatt wants to kick it again. Oh, absolutely, because you want to get a chance we to get the field position, get a good return, and get the ball into the hands of, of some the of the playmakers that he has, because he's got some great playmakers on the field. We fourth down. He gave Mathis another opportunity to uh, shorten the field for his offense. And on the field, or on the phone down to the field, the head coach. I think he was calling the president to try to see what the recount was down in, Fort, uh, in West Palm. I think that's what's going on. Rasheen Mathis, we haven't had an interception on him today. Great plays, if you remember, covering him, covering the All-American, man-to-man, none of them. Again, Smith. Hit this one much, much better. It'll bound at the 10. They may down it inside the 5. They do it the one-yard line. The gamble backfires by Alvin Wyatt. He would have had the ball at the 21-yard line. Instead, at the 1, following a 61-yard punt. And I tell you what, here's the question of the day. Now things change a little bit because does Coach Wyatt go into a situation where he tries to run, where he's had all the success with the three receiver, with the four receiver formation? Can he do it right now on the goal line, or do you go back to your bone formation and try to get you a little field position? 61 yards by T.J. Smith, the junior from Columbia, Maryland. And a good job by the Gunners, too, to beat that ball to the end zone. No question about it. Again, you know, the one thing about it, it's been great, really, special teams play all the way around. The kickers have been a little spe a little shaky from the standpoint of special things they're trying to do, and they're going with their full house back here. And Troutman loses yardage here. It's a safety. And the little man who popped it for a touchdown, Marquise Williams, wedging out off the left side, out close to the five-yard line. And now we're getting in the area where Brad Bernard loves to have his boys. You'll see right there, watch the drive blocking right here from the tight end. The offensive lineman doing a great job. And again, right there, pushing guys out. Big number 95, Cook, is in the house as a defensive lineman. He got four officially, did Marquise Williams. One of six running backs used in rotation. And now off this full house set. He dots. Again this way, just across the five, and out to the uh, to the six, setting up third down. Or you have a little bit of room now to throw the ball if you want to. Uh, that's at your option if you're Alvin Wyatt and Bethune. And that's all you want to do. You want to get yourself. You want to create space. We talked about it earlier. The worst th the worst problem that Bethune Cookman has had and Troutman has had is the fact that when you get in bad situations where it's second and, and 14, third and 25, those are the situations this offense is not in tune with being able to make things happen. Here you see right there, that was the offensive line goes off to the side there, Brad Bernard. Timeout taken. By Bethune Kirkman facing third down. Yeah, that's a very upset Brad Bernard. And a game with a lot hanging in the balance. It's for learning. Bright futures begin at Bethune Cookman College. Hey, Florida Classic fans, this was a classic, the 21st edition of Florida A&M at Bethune-Cookman College. It was our pleasure on Sunshine Network to bring it to you, and here to offer you a video edition. Here's the key, available on the World Wide Web or by calling 1-800-776-7808. Available videos include the Friday Night Step Show, the big game between the Rattlers and the Wildcats, and the Halftime Show. All brought to you by Amtrak. What a difference a train makes. Offensive line coach 
Brad Bernard following the timeout. His offensive chargers need seven. And Brad hadn't lost anyway. That's the one thing about both of us. Is we, could, we both love the Twinkies. And you can see right there, Big Brad is still putting down the Twinkies. Remember on third down, <laughs> Bethune scoring a 61-yard touchdown. Their first of the game facing third down in the second quarter. And Tony standing on the receiving end of those two touchdown strikes. And here incomplete for Trayron Porter. And it's fourth down. Big defensive stand for FAMU on that particular series when you consider the fact that, you know, they were down there on point-blank range. And, and what do you do in those situations? Fumbles could happen, the miscues. I mean, it's very touch-and-go. And Florida's FAMU, or excuse me, Bethune-Cookman holding on to a two-point lead. They got to really get this punt off. FAMU, as you said earlier, as you alluded to earlier, has blocked punts this year. Zach Adrian. The back of his end zone. Yeah, Florida a and black eight champion this year. Gets it out of there. He's not hit it particularly well either. As it hooks into the Bethune bench. And uh, will be marked out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Just a 30-yard kick. Two touchdowns scored here in the third quarter. Both in lightning fashion, back-to-back. -back. The first quarterback. Quick Ray calls his own number. And the ground attack, too, on the part of the field. Oh, yeah, bringing in the big defensive line. You see Big Cook lining up at tight end. That's the key to get those big old rump shakers going. <laughs> Marquise Williams, a rump shaking of his own. Down the short field, Gray. Able to find Isaac Brown. He, too, a junior college transfer. He's from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. San Jacinto Junior College. That they you what, out in Texas. And Bush almost dropped his transmission right there from great move if Brown could have stayed and kept going. Oh, Rattlers on that helmet. Second down, ball is in five. Gray sings it toward Mendeley. Gets a bump at the 10-yard line. Just a flick of the wrist and the ball flying. Unbelievable, you know, when you, you, there are not very many quarterbacks. You normally see guys who really grunt and groan. I mean, the ball just really just flies out of his hand. A tremendous talent. And again, because he's a big, strong guy, that also has a lot to do with it. Six foot four, 230 pounds. Gray uh, in this game, 18 of 34. He's nearing 300 yards tonight, 288 at the moment, and two touchdowns. Third down, Troy, it's caught, big hit, held on to. What a catch by T.J. Hines. His first of the football game is huge. And this is a guy who's, who's made big plays and key plays all season, wondering when you're going to hear from T.J. Hines, a 29-yard gain. And basically what he does is just run a little seam route. A gain of 29 yards. Transfer from uh, South Carolina. Ray again now with 29 yards here, Jamie, over 300 and shaken up. On to play Alex Goins, the cornerback. They've injured his left leg. Here again the pass. And again, watch right here. You see great drop back, bobble the pass right here. And you'll see right here, basically what he does Listen to that lumber put on by the All-American. Basically, for those of you who don't know what a seam route is, if you look at the hash marks, people consider the hashes seems like a zipper, and that's what it was, a seam route. There's your education for the day. Here you end up the lesson. T.J. Hines, junior from Tampa, second leading receiver on the year, takes the hit from Mathis. I guess you live in the shadow of Jaquay Nunnally if you're Hines or Isaac Brown or Marco Junius, who's already scored today. And the other thing, you talk about living in the shadows, really the mighty Quinn lives in the shadows of a man who's got more reception because Quinn has been the guy, or, been, or Gray's been the guy who's been getting the ball and spreading the love to all the receivers. You see him there checking there. They walk up Nunley on the wing. They have spread out the defense here. They're not spreading the love. First and goal, Gray. One-handed grab, Nunley out of bounds inside the two-yard line. And that's the reason why this young man right here, I think, will play on Sundays next year because what he has the ability to do, he's a situa he's a slot receiver. He's a guy you play inside, let him do the work. They had a basic little role play here on the run and shoot, and he does a great job. Again, look at those hands. 
If he touches it, he catches it. He's the lone setback. And a flag. Linesman. Uh, line of scrimmage problem. Neutral zone infraction. If this is against Florida a m it's a huge penalty. Oh my. On the offense. That moves him back five off the goal line. But you know what? It may, it may work out better because this is a passing team. They're not a masher in the mouth kind of team, so therefore it gives them a little bit more field to work with. If you remember, imagine if they run the very same play they just ran the last time. You got a guy in Nunley who now has more space to work, and you'll see right there from the penalties, six penalties for 52 yards there for, for Cook. Down the line, option Gray is scored once, twice in the second half. He goes in standing up, spread the defense, and Gray on the draw. We go back and forth for the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference Championship. Florida A&M now in front. Again, a coaching masterpiece on both sides. Alvin Wyatt, and here you have Billy Joe calling the option out. What, look at the diversity of plays that are called. If you remember on the last touchdown that Gray scored, he's responsible for all the touchdowns today. He shot the ball on the quarterback draw right up the middle. Now trying to pick up a pair. Judy's going to hold on. Rather T.J. Hines. That was broken up by Rasheen Mathis, who saves the two-point conversion. And I say this from time to time, Mama, here comes that man again. Here he is, Rasheen Mathis. He has not had an interception today, but look at the number of passes that he's broken up today. Truly being able to go man-to-man -man coverage with the All-American at wide receiver. And you'll see right here, nice little love tap, little kiss on the jaw just for your trouble. Huge play in this game. You know that they have missed a pair of two-point conversions as well as an extra point kick as Florida a &M. That's potentially five points and left on the field. For all the action around the action, tune in to Sunshine Network Live weeknights at 6.30. Pat Clark, Charles Davis with an in-depth look at Florida sports. Inside the locker rooms, the huddles, and the word straight from the coaches. Sunshine Network Live weeknights at 6.30, only on Sunshine. Great. A big day for Gray. Two rushing, two passing. No question about it. You see him talking to the coach. Said, coach, just get me the ball. Just get me the rock. You see him talking together. How's mom? How's dad doing? Uh, having a nice little conversation right now. Some folks at Nextel putting them together, I believe. Outside he goes. Sean Ford. Back the other way. Still on his feet. A flag in. They have players running around and turning their backs to pursuers. You get blocked from all different angles and occasionally one from behind, and that's what you have there, illegal contact. And you're exactly right, illegal block in the back, because when you when plays change their when players change direction on plays like that, the blockers lose their leverage. You know, the, the blockers are setting up blocks, and so they lose their leverage all of a sudden. Illegal block in the back on the return team. A 15-yard return vertically, and I would imagine about 35 horizontally. No question about it. The thing is that you look right here at the standards here again. This game right now is for all the marbles. If Bethune-Cookman wins, this would mark the first time in the university's history they would be in the 1AA playoffs. They reached the Division II playoffs in 1977. They lost to Cal Davis that year. Rattlers, on the other hand, as you see the scoring drive, have made five appearances since 1978 when they won the inaugural 1AA title. So a university in Florida A&M with a history of postseason play and the great aspirations of Antonio Stanley and Bethune trying to go where they've never been before. No question about it. Again, you know, you talk about the pride of these org of, of these great teams. You know, this game, you know, even though all the marbles are on the line here, this is about state pride. This is FAMU. This is BC. We don't like you. You don't like us. Your band stinks. Well, your band stinks too. Yo, mama. Oh, never mind. Sorry, <laughs> It's understandable as a Floridian, Jim. Patrell looked left, right, and finally uncocked that throw incomplete to Eric Reed, the freshman. 
And again, the Bethune-Cookman offensive line doing a great job of providing pass protection. You remember early on in the game, the Rattlers were in the backfield on every snap. Now you're going to see right now where the offensive line, what you want to do is try to keep the integrity of the pocket. And a quarterback loves it if he can keep that arc. Watch right here. You're going to see the offensive line. And again, no one in this area. Great pass protection from the rump stakers on the front. I love those guys with their hands in the dirt usually. Is what you're saying. Well, those guys whose butts almost drag on the ground because they're so big. That's basically what I like. Inside gift. And there is nothing there but a sea of green. Uh, push mark is Goggins. Back on the sophomore from Lake City. And also, this is right here. This is just one of those attitude check plays. You know, go downhill. They've been running outside, running lateral on both sides. And this is a play where, you know, you got to check, check the guy's car to make sure he's still paying attention. This is an offense that averages 252 yards a game on the ground. They have 87, and that is it for nearly three quarters tonight. And 50 or 60 of that has been scrambled by Crop. This is the third of their normal per game average. And here again, Vlad. And some uh, jawing back and forth. No, they, they're just saying, hey, God, I care for you. This is a wonderful time to be here. We're on television. Mom's watching. How's the kids? How's everything going with you? Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. Five-yard five penalty, third down. Pushing back five. It's the eighth penalty uh, against that offense. It includes the offensive lineman of Brad Bernard. And penalized close to 70 yards. See right there, fine offense. This guy's got three national championship rings from Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern All-American, great football player. I mean, he was guy truly, I mean, he mowed them down. Good, look at those rings right there. Right there, just, just diamonds and national championship rings. Great job playing for Earth Russell and Georgia Southern. Converted only twice on third down, just two for ten. Trotman goes back this way. Running out of time. And he loses his edge at the 21-yard line. Down he goes. Defensive pursuit cost him 10 yards. No question about it. Again, the speed. I mean, look at the team speed that's out there. We talk about Bethune Cookman's teams, people. Watch right here. You're going to see again. Offensive line does a pretty good job of pass protecting here. They run a little rollout sprint left pass. Nothing there downfield. Just probably reading progressions again. Watch the athleticism. Look at the acceleration, how he's separated right there between the two. But he just falls down at the end. That's a very important punt for uh, Zach Adrian, his ninth punt of this game. If he doesn't hit it well, you know, Florida a and and Isaac Brown had a good field position. He had a short field one. And then that's a good kick and great coverage. I'll have to start at the 35-yard line, and he used the field well, pinning Brown against the sideline. And the other thing is, we talk about the other academic All-Americans. Brown has to be an academic All-American because you know what he did? He did the smart thing. He got out of bounds before those three mad, crazed dogs came down there and hurt him. 47-yard punt, a six-yard return, the vista of the Citrus Bowl Stadium beneath the lights tonight on Sunshine. Florida Classic 21, presented by Walt Disney World Resorts and Amtrak. On the fast track is Gray, flares it out to Nunley, makes one miss, keeps right on going. Got nine out of it. Anthony Hubbard was the linebacker there trying to chase him. And a linebacker on Nunley, guess who's going to win that? That is clearly a mismatch. More hankies on the ground, people. Dead ball, unnecessary roughness foul on, on the defense. 15 yard penalty. On the hit he took, I believe First it was James down. Bush, the cornerback who shoved him into the boundary. That'd be 15 yards more. And instead of having the ball at the 35-yard line, Florida A&M, 35. Alvin Wyatt now surrenders field position to his 41. And again, you know, sometimes coaches can understand it and actually accept that. We've seen Coach animated pretty much this game. On that particular play, not as animated because, again, it's about setting the tempo. On first down. Time. Bounces outside. Back to his 42-yard line. Still on his feet. High throw pick. And throw the mark out of bounds on the 49-yard line. He'll lose about six. 
we talked about early, talking about the poise that this young man has. Again, a very good feel for it because he actually was reading the opposite way. Watch right here. You're going to see the pressure come in late, but he's going to do a good job here of just running the play. He's looking to the left side here. You see over here, and all of a sudden, the fence comes in, and, and the instincts, again, those are things that you cannot teach. And look right there, big old Cook doing a good job of getting his hand on the man, trying to get his guy down. Second down now. Austin seven. Lost the ball. And he fell on it at midfield. Was stripped from it. May have been Damian Cook again, Jim. It was. Who stripped the ball free. And the thing is, you talk about Cook. Cook's been doing double duty because if you remember, Cook has been lining up in the tight end position in short yardage situations. You're going to watch Cook come from the top side of the screen right here and do a good job of beating his man. Use the swim move and does a good job of getting there and causing the fumble. A little bit of a pop from Anthony Hubbard, the linebacker, to jump on him. As we say, that was a little something for your troubles. Cook, the senior. Defensive tackle also playing outside. A five-receiver formation. And a timeout will be called. Timeout taken by Florida A&M. Late in the third quarter and facing third down, 19 yards to go at midfield. This is a very important play when you consider the fact. I think Quinn is, is tired more than anything else. Look at him. He looks a little winded. He's bending over there, number 17, Quinn. Tired from all of the scramblings and moving around two consecutive plays where he had to scramble around. You see right there, adjusting his socks there a little bit, but he's tired. Look at him right there. You can tell from the posture, a little bit winded. But he's a specimen of an athlete. Man. Billy Joe, when he played in the AFL, played with Daryl LaMonica. Remember the Matt Bomber? Mm -hmm. Joe Namath, Jack Kemp, Bob Greasy. Throughout his career for Billy Joe, he says this young man, Quinn Gray, has a stronger arm than any of those illustrious quarterbacks. That his arm is stronger than the likes of LaMonica. Kemp, Namath, Greasy, and he's seen him first hand. Wow. But, you, but you, you're seeing everybody at home is seeing it first hand because, again, watch how the ball just flies out of his hand. Again, just a cannon. And the thing I'm, I'm more impressed by is his poise, the feel that he has in the pocket. 21 touchdowns when the day began, now at 23. And that's the key, efficiency. Five interceptions, as much as they throw the football to have only five interceptions, that's a heck of a job. They set up the screen to Nunnally. Get him in the open field. A flag in, Nunnally down at the 44-yard uh, line. Josh Oglesby, the linebacker, wrapped him up. I believe you're going to have holding by the offense on that play one by one of the receivers. I might decline this penalty. Force fourth down and 13 yards to go. I'm Bethune. That'd make uh, Florida A&M punt the ball to me. And again, hats Holding off to the Bethune. The offense Cookman. has been declined. Fourth down. Hats off to the Bethune Cookman defense again. This is the reason why this team is in the game. Fam, you would have run them straight out of the gym had it not been for the great play of this defense. 95 Cook doing a tremendous job along with his partners. Here he is on punt block and punt coverage as well. Field position critically important as we head toward the fourth quarter with the championship on the line. T.J. Smith to take the snap from Mike Sizemore. Before he can do that, another flag. It is what it is with the penalties. Oh, no question about it. When you think about it, like all the long... They need to be more disciplined than this. Well, I need, all they need is bleach for the hankies. That's all. <laughs> Just need a little bleach for the Hankies. They've hit the ground so much today, but that's okay. The bottom line is, is you, we've got a fine football game, score 25-21, and everything is still hanging in the balance. Including the conference championship that this capacity crowd has turned out to see. Good snap. Smith with the kick. End over end. And it bounds into the back and landed on the fly on the back of Cedric Copeland. And uh, it will be down. 
at the 17-yard line. It hit Copeland, one of the cover men, in the back and is blown down, so it's not a touchdown. Regardless of what happens, it hit a rattler on the fly. But then at the same time, then you saw the Thune Cookman player actually go after the ball. The question is going to be, since no rattler impeded a Bethune Cookman player originally from catching the ball, you're going to watch right here on the replay. It just hits him right in the back. Now, watch what happens. You're going to see a Bethune Cookman player touch the ball. That now all of a sudden makes that a live football. That should be Florida AM football. A call from our referee. Illegal touch. Well, you know, if he catches that punt on the fly, it's not illegal touching. But I think because of the defensive, I mean, I, I guess that's the rule. I've seen it caught on the fly mm -hmm. and down there. And the key would be if you're not impeding the a receiver from catching the ball from the receiving team, and that wasn't the case either. That is a monumental call in this football game. Very interesting. But it was blown down at the 16-yard uh, line, and now with a penalty marked off to the 20-yard line. And the inside hand up. Working to uh, Marquise inside, Anthony Cola on the stop. For the Florida A&M Rattlers, who arrived here 8-2, and two, ranked 14th in the nation, Bethune-Cookman, 17th. You know, in the 1AA playoffs, Jamie, only 16 teams are in that field. And it's going to be very interesting when you consider the fact that, again, many think that FAMU is already in it because of really just the strength of schedule. There have been two games that were on the Bethune-Cookman schedule that really come in, were called into question, and that might be, should they not win this football game, what keeps them out? But I think they certainly deserve it. Drummond down the line option. Plus the pitch reverses the shield, comes back this way, gets a block, and they'll call that an illegal block? I don't think so. I don't know. The referee was right on top of it and threw the flag. Napoleon Joseph will be flagged for an illegal block. And the players are laughing about this. Well, while we have a moment, here's Mark. Thanks a lot, guys. I'm standing down here with somebody who has a great deal of uh, knowledge about the world of music, the one and only Luther Campbell. You know him as Luke Skywalker, and you're a big-time college football fan. Nobody really gives you props for that, but it goes back to your days hanging out in the Orange Bowl. Yeah, oh, definitely. I mean, college football, you know, it's a lot of excitement. I mean, you know, I just like to see kids, you know, come up, you know, come through the ranks and be able to go and support their families. Talk about the Florida Classic. You've seen a lot of social functions, a lot of social functions uh, surrounding sports. Can you put into words how big this is, where it ranks? I mean, this ranks uh, right up there with the big, with the big major bowl games. I mean, you know, with the with the regular Division One college teams. I mean, you can't get no bigger than this here. I mean, you know, it, it was a good thing, and I'm glad that they brought it over to Orlando, because Orlando is like opening their arms for you know for this game here, unlike it was when it was in Tampa. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. Luke Skywalker, Luther Campbell, as he's known in the real world, hanging out with us here at the Florida Classic. Let's go back up to you guys in the booth. Man, Mark is in some elite company there. How are you big timing? Well, Luke and I go way back also. He's an old, long, lifelong friend. And, and the thing about it is, is that Luke has been very instrumental with the University of Miami and, and the Miami program. The things that he's done, you know, counseling players, you know, a lot of times you have some trouble players. Luke has been one of those guys a that friend. will go in there. Absolutely a friend of the program. A lot of people have different things to say about the lyrics of his music, but the facts are he is a good man. Third down now. This is Silver throwing incomplete through the hands of Trey Ryan Porter. And it's fourth down. And the kicking unit will come on. There is Porter unable to uh, make the catch. And Porter in this game with only one grab, and that came in the first half. Cedric Copeland just blanket coverage there. Again, great job of defense there by FAMU. But you notice the problem is, again, Bethune-Cookman will have success if they can keep it in normal situations. But when they get in a situation where it's third, second and long, second and forever, as I would call it, that's when they get in trouble. This will be a school record. The 10th punt 
Up again, Isaac Adrian. 40 yard line and uh, spun down hard. 10 kicks in one game. Isaac Brown dropped here. Johnny Vickers on a special teams coverage. They're going to have to ice his leg down over on the side. You see him kind of walking a little slow. Hey, that's all right. But, but see, that's why I don't That's why I don't mess with kickers and punters and stuff like that. Because see, what those guys do is when, the, when all of the work starts, they're there at the beginning of practice. And then what they'll do is they'll go out there and they'll kick the ball around for their little segment. Then they go in the clubhouse after it's over while we're out there just sweating our tails off. Joe over there. Seems to be a sense of resentment about that. A shovel pass inside of March Banks. It's been a busy day working inside on March Banks. Hubbard, the middle linebacker, gives him a shot with a minute and 20 seconds remaining. And again, just great defense. This, this entire game has been about tremendous defense. They have a sideline warning for uh, Bethune Cookman on the far side of the field. Games had everything. <laughs> Sideline warnings. Not the marching bands. Huh? What a show they put on. I tell you, oh. they might have to suit some of those drum majors up for fan mute. On second down. Big hole. A big hole for Arch Banks across midfield to the 40 yard line. And he fights his way to the 37. What a job up front by the Florida A&M offensive line. Right downhill, right at you. Watch right here. Good job. A draw play right there. And you're going to see a great block there by the offensive line springing this young man who's been a workhorse both running and pass block. And you see him there with the ball again. Picked up a couple of more. March Banks today. Truly has been an unheralded player when you talk about, you know, he's the guy now, when you run the run and shoot, that back is what we call the PP. He's the personal protector of the quarterback. Now Gray settles and throws very nearly intercepted, skipped up incomplete. And Gray missed that play because he's, he's yelling at his receiver, but that, that one's directly on Gray. You're going to see right here, he comes wide open. Great play action fake, but he hits, he just puts the ball a little too high. Now, I understand what he's saying because I think he thinks his receiver had what we call gator arms. That's little, little itty bitty arms that don't extend real far. Torrell Robinson narrowly missed the interception. Third down. Still within striking range. For AM, which leads late in the third. Gray guns, not only catches, first down, 22-yard line, the drive stays alive. And what do you do? You go back to your playmaker, you know, he'll catch the ball, he'll stick his arms out. I was wrong, I am sorry, let me apologize to Mr. Gray, I think he was right. You'll see right there, 10 receptions, 113 yards, one touchdown. They're not going to break that record. Action Jackson, the University of Louisville, will not break his record. I gain him 11. Mark Springs now pounds. And the clock continues to run. So we will come down to the fourth quarter playing for the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference Championship. An NCAA playoff berth on the line and state bragging rights between two arch rivals in Florida A&M and Bethune. And when they put the ball on the tee, 70,000 show up. Not bad. And get the final playoff. Great. Able to uh, deliver, juggling Isaac Brown, and he held on to it for about a yard. And that's the end of the third quarter. Bethune has not beaten Florida A&M in five years, but they have a shot at doing it again. And for Florida A&M, a win will be their fifth consecutive trip to the NCAA. Yeah, 16600. The spectacle of the Florida Classic. Paul Kennedy, Jamie Dukes, our sideline reporter Mark Gray. Delighted to have you along this evening. The scribe, as I call it. He's a righty. Third down. I'm with you. So for a third down now at nine. For Quinn Gray. Rattlers in front as we go to the fourth. He called twice. Terry Logan to snap the ball, the center did. 
flush from the pocket. We'll have a holding call. What's going to be amazing here is Freddie Moore, number 70 for Florida A&M, only has one hand with which to hold. The other one is wrapped up because he's suffering from a broken hand. But the thing is, he put it to good use. And it's holding. I mean, one of his paws would be impossible to hold. It's just a big club. There he is. But the question of the day is, you see where you see right there on his left hand, it, right there, it, see right there, look at that meat hook right there. Now you can't hold with that, can you? Yeah, but it's a nice little weapon. I remember back when I used to play with, never mind, I won't tell this. But I tell you what, I mean, yeah, you, 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 when you have an opportunity right there, you can take your hand. Yeah, you got a broken hand, but think about it. You've got a cast underneath that. Then they wrap padding all around that. Decline. You've got a hammer. Oh, no question about it. Remember the song? If I had a hammer, I'd hit you in the E. Well, I don't think it's the lyrics like Juan that. Vasquez, the freshman specialist, has missed from 47. He's come up short from 43. And Billy Joe still has confidence in his young freshman kicker. This will be a 45-yard try. He was 13 of 17 and missed only four all season. Missed twice tonight. These are important points, leading by four. This to give Van Hill a touchdown lead. Now the kick is away, and again, it will be short. Now they're going to run it out of there. And this is Mathis. Mathis upfield at the 30 already. Mathis to the 40. Mathis right go the distance. 103 yards out of the end zone. 103 for Rasheed Mathis. And the third leads. And not a flag down. You call the ticket. This guy is, as I said, everybody's All-American is this young man right here. Mathis is a playmaker. He's done a great job of coverage. 103 yards. What a play in this series. Maybe history. For Alvin Wyatt as the fourth quarter opens, leads Billy Joe playing for the MEAC championship. And a first ever trip to the NCAA playoffs in Division I AA for Bethune. The extra point is good. Off a missed field goal that came up short, Rasheen Mathis races 103 yards. A school record return. Watch right here. The ball is live. You see right here, kicks the ball back. Everybody's standing around. Look at these guys just standing around. Mostly offensive linemen to not cover guys. And you'll see him just break down again, following his blockers. There is Cook once again. Mathis and the Cats have clawed their way back in front. History tonight in Orlando. Molding his players and rebuilding the program. Catch Florida Sports Profiles Friday at 8.30 on Sunshine. Ah, the Bethune fans and the band celebrating. A performance by the Cats tonight. Isaac Brown on the return. Is he coming the other way? Across midfield and finally knocked down. 41-yard line. We may have just seen the play of the series in this storied rivalry between Bethune and Florida A&M, a 103-yard return of a missed field goal by Rasheen Mathis. And actually, that number is more than 103. That's more like a 108-yard kickoff, I mean, a 108-yard return, but the, but the but the key is the fact that, again, you have linemen. You see right there, you have linemen that were in there, and they're not covered, guys. That's the whole key to the success of that play. And let's go down to Mark Gray on the sideline. Guys, Rasheen Mathis is a budding superstar in the MEAC. The sophomore had four interceptions versus the Morris Brown College on a homecoming game in October. And now he turns what could be the biggest game, uh, the biggest play, pardon me, of the season for this team. Now, one thing about Mathis, he and Coach Wyatt have a bit of a little standing bet. Alvin Wyatt holds the single season mark for interceptions in Bethune-Cookman uh, history. Who's number two on that list? Rasheen Mathis. Back to you guys in the booth. Yeah, he had 11 this year. That may be. You know, in college football, the beauty of it, Jamie, is a young man can make a play in the spur of a moment that he is remembered for the rest of his life. And in this series, that moment has just met Rasheen Matthews. I think you're absolutely right. 
if Bethune-Cookman advances to the NCAA playoffs, it will come in large measure on that play. And rattled, the Rattlers now see the remarkable Jaquay Nunley drop a pass. No question about it. Again, they are rattled when you think about it. But here's the question. Here it is, second and ten. What do you do? You have no success with the kicking game whatsoever. Is this a time where you want to try to go for it on four downs? Yes, it's still early on second down, but there's been no success with the kicking game of FAMU from the kicker's perspective. Back and forth we play. Archbank slipped as he took the handoff. And it's third down and log now. Josh Ogilvy on this stop. And their kicking game is shot. Juan Vasquez has missed three times outside 45, and one has been a monumental disaster. Not his fault, but not entirely his fault. Craig, the Rattlers need a play. And they get one from Jaquay Nunnally for a first down. And that's what makes special players special. This young man is not only picking up yardage, he's not only just getting gimme and, and trash catches. Every catch that he's had today has moved the chains, basically. That's what you're looking for out of your playmakers, out of your leaders. This may be the greatest game in this classics history. Back truly, and forth. Truly a classic. 28-25, Gray unloads again to Dunlap. That is his 12th catch, if our math is right. The audience, our statistician, are calculating here. And you'll, and you'll see right here, just runs a little out right there. Pushes off, a little push off there to get separation. Moving the chain. 12 catches for Nunley. That good for seven. Marchbank. On the draw inside, they're pounding inside, spreading by formation, and then working the soft underbelly. And you're absolutely right, because that's how you that's how you find seams. And what March Banks is doing is doing a good job of running hard. He is I mean, he is running downhill now. The offensive line of FAMU is doing a good job of pass protecting, but they're more just fan blocking. March Banks is pounding on the Bethune Cookman defense, and they've been out there a long time. We consider the fact that they've had a lot of plays to play today. They have taken a timeout. We will pause as well. 12 minutes away from the finish line in what is indeed a classic in Orlando. Call 1-800-USA-RAIL for details and save 25%. Hey, Classic fans, you'll need a video of this. Absolutely. <laughs> on the World Wide Web at sunshinenetwork.com or call the number you see in the screen. That also includes the marching bands and Rasheen Mathis' 103-yard run to glory. No question about it. I tell you what, Mr. Gray has gone, the mighty Quinn has gone on to pass for 360 yards in this game. Now with his offense set, he has plenty of time to walk around and audible line. Almost he's like he's drawing it up. Now calls timeout. Bethune took a timeout. And now Florida A&M calls timeout on first down and 10. And what he was trying to do is go take advantage. They were in press coverage right across the board with all four receivers basically in a man coverage situation. So basically what he wanted to do was try to check to a play where he could take advantage of one of the one-on-one -on -one breakdowns from the receivers. So the two schools only lost one game in league play battle for the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference Championship, a capacity crowd in the Citrus Bowl in Orlando, Florida. With Jamie Dukes, Mark Gray, I'm Paul Kennedy. Jimmy Lee Sterling, our director tonight. Ken Cavanaugh, our producer for our entire Sunshine Network crew. I'd like to share this evening with you. This is a uh, magnificent football game between these two teams. Great evening of football, 74 degrees. You see right there, the band a little tired. They worked a little overtime. Wake up! The guy right there, he was asleep. He was asleep. <laughs> Now, where are the big hats? They go to baseball hats when they're in the stands? Hey, these guys are stars, man. <laughs> these guys are stars. I don't see any rally cast, but I tell you what, these guys played three nights back to back. First and goal as it's marked. Just inside the 10. Archbanks straight up the gut to the six-yard line. Every snap important. Down the cat defense forced Florida A&M into a field goal try. 
And again, gamesmanship there. What you saw was the Mighty Quinn doing a good job of trying to act as though they were still going to pass the ball, you know, giving out the fake audible signals outside. Hey, guys, we're doing this, we're doing this, and try to run real north and south at you right up the gut. Press coverage. See you on Jaquay Nunnally. He's looking his way. They throw for Nunnally in the end zone. Batted into the air. Incomplete. Rasheen Mathis was there. Mama, here comes that man again, number 16, she, and he's on the guy. Again, anytime you get there in a situation, this is man-on-man -man right here. All-American to All-American, right there on the play. That young man will be playing, both those guys will be playing on Sundays next year. That's the matchup tonight. Mathis facing Gray, who has thrown two touchdowns and run for two. And again, no interceptions. That's the key. Huge play here. Does Florida A&M have to settle for a field goal try, which wouldn't be certain they missed three. Third down. Eager score. The slant route. Batted away. Incomplete again. Knocked down by Carlos Lawrence. And it's fourth down. And here will come the field goal unit. Carlos Lawrence read the play all the way. Great job of keeping, again, we talk about this defense all year long. Watch right here. You're going to see him line up in the slot. And what he's going to do is just run a quick little slant on the inside. But what you're going to see is they jump him up top here. Great job of getting his hands in. And he's holding on in the back here, and that's all right, too. This from 23 to tie the game. Juan Vasquez. The kick is in the air. We have a tie game. He finally knocks one through the uprights. We're locked up in this duel for a conference crown. 28 points apiece, less than 12 minutes remaining. Lawrence and that Cat D in a game in which their coordinator left. They have raised the bar. Good defensive stand there. Big Screen TV, 32 inches or larger. So roll in for the savings during the grand opening sale now at Rex. Carlos Lawrence, the fifth-year senior, one of the big plays of his career. Bat that pass away intended for Marco Junius. And then the field goal by Juan Vasquez, the freshman who had missed three, all in his defense outside of 40 yards, hooks this one through the uprights. What's he feel like? Finally, huh? Here's Mark. Be any surprise that Vasquez shows heart and toughness and comes back to make a field goal like this. I remember early in the season when the two teams, when I should say Florida and then was taking on North Carolina A&T on October 14th in Tallahassee. Bill Hayes, the head coach of North Carolina A&T, at the end of the first half, burned three consecutive timeouts to try to ice Vasquez. So what does Vasquez do? He bangs about a 44-yarder. Trouble is, they lost the game by 20 points. But guys. <laughs> Sean Ford, good return out across the 30. Mark and Jamie to the 35-yard line. Greg Ray on special teams coverage following the 22-yard return. So for Vasquez, who leads all the MEAC in scoring and does so as a 19-year-old freshman. Well, the key to that also in leading in scoring is because you also have an, have an offense that's putting you in position to make plays. And that's what, you know, averaging 40 points a game, that ain't too bad. Patel Troutman, a drive now with the season on the brink. On the line with 11-15 for May. Back drop. Bounced it outside nicely, didn't he? Just, just that vision. Uh, Torrance Green, number 78, was the big right tackle. But he started inside and then went around Green to get outside. Absolutely. He dropped through the defenders inside. But the, the key to that is that Coach Alton White has done a good job of recognizing that what I can do, if I, the way I want to get my running game going, is to spread them out and run the quarterback draw. Several times when he scrambled, those were pre-designed plays, if nothing else, in his mind, because what he's doing is recognizing that the game is, is, is so tight. Bam, you was playing real tight on defense. But by spreading them out and running the quarterback draw, you can still have semblance of a running game. Wants to take as much time as he possibly can off that clock. And March, Troutman looks, guns, Stanley leaps and makes the catch across midfield at the Florida A&M 32-yard line. 
Boy, a hanging catch by Antonio Stanley. And it all starts with the offensive line. We talked about it, Brad Bernard and his boys. What they do is he, they do a good job of maintaining that hook as we talk about it. You'll see right there. You're right there, Daly. No one there. Look at that pocket he still has. And what you're seeing is a drag route being run across the side right there. Great catch. This a, guy, Stanley, is a playmaker. A gain of 24. On the play to Stanley, his first catch of the second half after scoring two touchdowns in the first. Big play. Big play. They go back to him in the fourth quarter. Troutman up. Troutman dumps and it's blocked by Javon Henry. And if Henry had held on to the ball, he might have got 10, 15 yards more before someone tackled it. But sometimes when those fullbacks get out there, you see that hump on his back? That means I'm a rhino. And what that means is he's going to butt up in there and block guys all the time. But in that particular play, you have the defender getting in between him, and that's what really caused him to really miss the play. Alex Fortune right here, you'll see right there, that little swat of the arm right there really blocked his vision. You're saying he's not used to having to make finesse catches like that? You are correct, sir. Just fundamental, let me go and hit somebody. I mean, that is correct, sir. They find there. Cutman. Guns to high for Stanley again. And now it's third down. But if you notice, all, all the success that they've had when you're talking about Bethune-Cookman has come when Stanley has got the ball, when Trotman has been able to get the ball to him. And another thing, I want, I've been talking a lot about Gray. Trotman has, done, Trotman has done a great job of settling in when you consider the fact early on in the game, struggled a little nervous with throwing the ball high, but he did a good job of really settling in there. Uh, now he gives way to Alan Suber. Trotman has completed only one pass in the second half, and now here comes your designated passer. And Alan Subic on third down. Looking deep, unloading deep, thinking end zone, and it's incomplete at the goal line. Saying the target was Eric Lash, who was very well covered. And a question to you, my friend. Do you, what do you do here? Fourth down. Do you punt the ball? You try to pooch it deep, you try a field goal, and the Danny Mathis this year, his best kick has been a 42. He's going to attempt now what appears to be, if this is not a fake, this would be a 49-yard field goal. Got the conference crown on the line. It's not a fake, and he has hit it very well from 49, and it's no good. It had the distance, but he hooked it just wide left. Wow. He hit that a ton Boy, from 49. Struck it well. Wow, what a game. We go back and forth this close, a matter of feet to leading in the fourth quarter. Wow. And you'll see right there, he's trying to lean it in English, a little English. Put that seven iron a little bit more. You should have pushed it instead of hooking it. He drew it in there. He wanted to push it a little bit. See him telling the coach over there? Lynn Thompson, I think the athletic director over there. <laughs> now Gray had a huge game. He throws Isaac Brown. Barely, narrowly misses, connecting for what would have been a touchdown. And that's one that Gray is going to see about 900 times tonight in his sleep. That's the one that got away. Gray in this game hasn't let too many get away. That was his 48th passing attempt. He has thrown for 360 yards. What a contrast in offensive styles. Better ice, better ice his arm down, too. Running it up inside now. On second down, Kendall Johnson, the junior from Madison, Florida, his very first carry of this football game. Bring a guy in with fresh legs, give you an opportunity to see, give the defense to see, an opportunity to see something different. Quickly at third down. Clock hasn't moved much either. Nine and a half to play. Gray calls this at the line of scrimmage. Throws the hitch, and it's close to being a first down. Good footwork, tap dancing, Isaac Brown on the sideline. And the reason that play happens is because Brown took, took Bush deep the last time and beat him deep. So what happened, Bush actually gave him enough cushion to give him a first down. Great play call by Coach Joe. Go right back at him. They pick up the first. First down now. 
at the 45-yard line. And running this package, calling every play along the line of scrimmage. Dumping it out of the backfield. Stumbling forward and up to midfield. Lunging again, Kendall Johnson. So he comes in, catches a pass, runs the ball. And you know, Ken, the thing is, he's so excited to get in the game and get the rock in his hands. He's having problems with equilibrium. Hold, I mean, you know, keeping his balance because he's so excited. It's coming to me. It's coming to me. I'm going to make something happen. 350 passing yards now. Johnson off his fingertips. Incomplete. Trying to lob that ball over Bethune's uh, linebacker. He's charging there. Steve Baggs. For 52 on the outside. And again, the defensive lines really on both sides of the ball. Bethune Cookman getting a little winded. I mean, when you consider the fact it is difficult to rush the passer. And as you talked about, 50 times where you got to rush the passer, that, that will wear you out quicker than anything else. Four receiver set. On third down. Right at midfield. Four man pass rush. Gray. Scrambling. To the sideline, he has the first down. He is out of bounds at Bethune's 42 yard line. Some wheels there, Tim Jets. Oh, no question about it. I mean, he's the complete package. Really reminds me of, of the quarterback from the Tennessee Titans, Steve Air McNair. Watch right here. Great job of pass protection. You're going to see the freshman 52 come around the end there. But again, great poise. And watch those legs moving around right there. Hey, there's nothing you can do right there. It's just one of those things where you're danged if you do, you're danged if you don't. Another four receiver set for Gray. What a huge game for him. All purpose yardage. Running, passing. They run the shovel pass here to Marchbank. Marchbank's inside the 30. Down to the 28 yard line. That is a gain of 14 yards. And watch right here, but just talking about a statue, a shovel play right here, right? Watch how the seam opens up right here, and you got a caravan of love right there with offensive linemen coming down the field to help out. Running without the huddle, Marchbanks hits it up inside to the 20, inside the 20, the 19 yard line. Carlos Lawrence knocked him down. They keep coming at you in waves in the defense. Can't substitute. It's difficult to substitute. Oh, absolutely. And that's the thing about when you run that no-huddle offense again, you know, big old offensive linemen love when you pass the ball a lot because it's considering the fact that guys have to rush the pass. Eight minutes remaining. Ball is now in a classic in Orlando. The pitch to Marchbank. Rasheed Mathis is up hard against the run. Again, this guy is everywhere. You talk about the complete package, and look at that body. I mean, look at that waistline. He's got a little flak jacket on right here, but see, I wish I was an athlete and looked like that. Jamie, I don't think it's possible. We could carve you in half. You wouldn't be that lame. <laughs> Impossible. First down now. The drive remains alive. Through the hands. Right. Slipped right through the hands of DeMar Bowe. The other guys who get... The other guys who get tired as well are the wide receivers. You know, it's real difficult when you when you talk about what you need to do when, you, when you're running routes and defensive linemen, they get all tired, but at the same time, the wide receivers get worn out from running all those routes. You see from Jamie there, and two Mathises make a spelt 300 pounds. <laughs> One Jamie. Second and out. Home to God for the end zone at Nunnally. Contact with Nunnally, no flag. He was hooked a yard into the end zone. Mathis there. Lawrence is there. Two salty defensive backs, and there's no flag. All American. That's what you call all Americans' courtesy. Right here again. Mano e Mano right here, and he does a good job of getting off the jam. And again, what happens is you but it's really inadvertent contact. They just kind of trip their legs up there a little bit, but not a whole lot. Good no call by the officials. Uh, it's third down. Third and ten. Not only being pressed by Mathis. A fabulous matchup that has been tonight. Looking for him again. Throwing that way again. Lawrence is there. And it's incomplete at the pylon. Is there confusion in that rally? Mathis was there on Nunnally. You had two receivers, two defensive backs in a small area. And they'd be up in the field goal unit. So obviously, I think it was a busted route with receivers for you to clear out, but what they were trying to do really is more feature not only take advantage of that opportunity, but again, Mathis not having it.
Vasquez. Titus, this will be a 34-yard uh, try. They'll put Florida a and back in front. And the kick is good. From 34, two in the fourth. By the Miami freshman, Juan Vasquez. 31-28 in his first classic. Talk about atonement. Vasquez is a lot more popular at the moment than he was when this quarter began. You'll see right there the young man, I got it in and I made it happen. And you'll see Gray right there, the quarterback who's really had a tremendous game, close to 400 yards in passing, but a real general out there. The, the, think about it. He's had probably four or five drop passes today. He could be in the range of four or 500 yards. 31-28. In a raucous Citrus Bowl Stadium. And these fans know that there's so much football to be played. I mean, 724 is an eternity. They have both teams score in the time remaining here. No question about it. Again, the key is going to be field position. Zoom Cookman has been doing a great job. You see right there, 13 plays, 51, 51 yards in the field goal by Vasquez. But the, the key is, Bethune Cookman has had tremendous field position, particularly in the second half from their kicking game. If they can get a little something started right here, they're right back at you. That 13-play drive led to a field goal, followed an 11-play Rattler march that led to a field goal. So 24 snaps all here in the fourth quarter. Time of possession belongs to the Rattlers in the fourth quarter. Now, this was not Vasquez, but rather Lennon Nesbitt that kicked the ball out of bounds. It'll be spotted upfield at the 35-yard line. And again, good field position. That's as good as a kickoff return. You see Coach Coach Wyatt there doing a great job rallying the troops. And again, it's very difficult. Mark alluded to it earlier with the loss of defense coordinator Pete Adrian. The thing you have to concern yourself with is, hey, when I want to make adjustments, when I want to talk to my team, I can't do it because I've got to go ahead and coach and focus on what's going on right now. But look how he's teaching right here. That's the beauty of Coach Wyatt. He is a teacher. He's a fiery guy. He's a good-looking guy. Where do you get one of those shirts? I don't know. Where do you get one of those mustaches? <laughs> what do you, I never see one of the big star. Right? <laughs> That's the old throwback. A Florida classic record, 70,719. 21-year history of this rivalry. Never been a bigger crowd or perhaps a better game than this one. Flat right over the middle. Tough catch made. Eric Reed is first of the night for the Dade City freshman upfield near midfield. And it's, now you got an S and D for Trotman when you consider stand and deliver. What he does, he backs up back there and he just fires the ball. Excellent execution, great arm. Gain on the play, upfield of the uh, gain of 12 upfield of the 48 yard line. Reads it out to the far side of the field and trips this way. Uh, a new wrinkle here, single back set. This is a page out of Florida A&M's playbook now. Intercepted, Alex Schwartz and dropped the ball. And you know why Schwartz and dropped the ball? Because he caught that ball 17 times in his mind before that ball came down. May have been the ball game had he come down with this, batted into the air along the line of scrimmage. And you're going to see right underneath here, you're going to see the ball just up in the air forever. And all he does is just short arm it. Oh, keep running. That's that's what they tell. We used to tell DBs when you drop those gimmies. Hey, just keep running to the sideline. Oh, does that let the wild cats off the hook? Does this cat have another life? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Rasheed Mathis with the play perhaps of the century in this rivalry. 103-yard return. And now Trump slithers through a tackle. Gets to the corner. Across midfield to the 47-yard line, setting up third down and four. And again, he could have fair caught that last interception. All he had to do was catch the ball. It would have been almost impossible, you would think, had the uh, Rattlers got the ball back and killed some clock for 
Bethune Cookman to make a game of this down the stretch. But see, the other re the other thing is that's why number five is on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah. It's plain and simple. If you ever want to know, he's a great running back or he's a great linebacker. He, that's why he's on that side of the ball. That young man, he will see that ball in the air a thousand times tonight. Third down. This is Alan Sober. Sober back this way. Gets a block, throws, first down. Again, Eric Reed. Eric Reed makes the catch, but behind the play, a penalty marker has been thrown. And the problem, they're going to call it back for ineligible linemen downfield. All that scrambling around looked to be Torrance Green, and it is. You're right, Jamie Dukes. A critical penalty. So they would have been in business at the 37-yard line. But you know, the thing is, you can't get mad at the offensive lineman because you got to remember, Trotman, Trotman has been running the ball all game. And, and what you want to do, you're going to see right here, the offensive line, this is the line of scrimmage right here. Run it, boys. And what you're going to see is Trotman and what he does, he scrambles around. He's over here. He's all over the place. These guys are just trying to protect their man. That's all they're trying to do. I think you're going to see right here, number 62, at the top there, right up here, downfield. But again, what they're trying to do is just protect their quarterback back and really make something happen and I believe is there a loss down to go for that yes it is there should be loss it down it's third down posted here eligible receiver downfield third down 10 yards to go must reach the 42 silver pumps unloads under pressure throws and it is broken up and completed the 15-yard line. And Suber was laid out as he let the pass fly. Wow. What a game. What a game. It's fourth down. Now what do you do? Six minutes to go, you punt it. You got to punt the ball. I, I, I think in this situation, you got to punt the ball. But watch right here again. You're going to see Suber back up right here. Good job of pass track. They run a sprint right pass, roll out pass, and you're going to see right here at the very tail end, he just gets level. And I mean level by Jerron Dale. Nearly made the catch. Now there's more. Huge game for him. And Adrian. Well, Junior needs to pound this good. Just didn't get it away. Into to Brown. Brown will catch it at the 14-yard line. Back inside the 15, right down at the 13-yard line. Tremendous special teams all day. The coverage teams have been tremendous all day when you consider the fact that, again, that was a crucial play because if he doesn't break that play, Brown is maybe going to the house or maybe bringing it out to the 40 or 50-yard line. Kenny Heatley. Special teams gunner. That's the second outstanding special teams tackle he's made today. Great football player. I tell you what, the coaches, they really like the young man. And that's the thing about it. Let's talk about effort. These guys are leaving it out there on the field. Everybody is dying out there. They're tired. You can look at the defensive line, and they're tired for Bethune-Cookman. They've basically been out there the entire game. And again, I can't tell you how difficult it is to pass rush, not to mention 55 times. Defense has to get the football back. Ray is going to throw instead of run. He rolls the dice, throws to Junius, incomplete. The stop the clock with 544 remaining. Now, this is a game of less than six minutes up in lights, and what you think Florida A&M is going to try to take all the air out of this time. Well, that's the wide-open offense that you talked about, the running gun, the wide-open. Coach, Mo Coach Joe's offense is just wide open, and the things that they do, they want to try to take advantage of mismatches, and they have one-on-one -on -one coverage with Bush on the outside. On the ground this time. Good solid running for a gain of seven by O.J. Marchbanks. Let's check in with Marks. Guys, last year in the 1AA playoffs, Quinn Gray seemed to have control of the contest, but he threw an interception in the fourth quarter and it seemed to rattle his face. By that, when I saw him going deep down feet with a comfortable lead to start this drive. Let's see how it unfolds for the Rattlers. All right, Mark. Third down now. The draw. Bethune was sitting on the draw, and they stop him short. Bethune read that right. They set on the quarterback draw. Anthony Hubbard, Rasheed Mathis. 
It's fourth down. The defense gets the ball back. And what you're going to see is Cook staying home. Big number 95 right there. He does a good job. That little bit right there allowed the All-American. There he is once again. Mama, here comes that man, Mathis. Anthony Hubbard, leading tackler on the year. The punt by T.J. Smith will be sitting in the direction of Rasheen Mathis. Bethune. Nearly or may have got a piece of that. He did. It'll be marked down at the 42-yard line. That was Torrell Robinson. Torrell Robinson has blocked a punt. The special teams for Bethune have been huge in this quarter. The big return, and now look at this. He got a piece of it. Comes right there from the outside right there. Does a good job of laying out. Watch right here. You're going to see from the outside of your screen right there. Coming there, getting his hands out. That's exactly how it's taught. Extend your hands. Put your hands on the kicker's foot. He did a good job right there, and he got a big piece of the ball. Bethune-Cookman last won the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference crown in 1988. Alvin Wyatt has never beaten Billy Joe. 0-3. Oh, Bethune has never been to the 1-AA playoff. They stand 43 yards away with 421 remaining, and Trotman is buried back at the 49. Knocked down by Jerron Daly. A loss of eight how this game began. No question about it. What you're going to see is Daly come around from the outside right here, beating the tackle right there. Again, short corner. And again, it's difficult. Again, these guys have been out there landing on the line. But when you think about it, FAMU's defense has not been on the field nearly as long as the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats. His fourth sack tonight. Both of these teams deserve to be in the NCAA playoff. Absolutely. Where they have battled. Huh? Absolutely. What a game. Troutman, 50 yards away. Back this way. Flag in. Flags down. Pass complete to Porter. Down to the 39-yard line, a gain of 14. And what you're going to see is basically Gabriel Pinella, number 72, who was bought in to replace Jesus Sundry, were holding. Holding the call will bring it back. So the big sack, and now the holding call. Brad Bernard pulls out on the play because uh, Darling got him the last time. He pulls Hayden Sundry out, and what happens is they bring a fresh guy in, Gabriel Pinella. He comes in cold, and the man just ate him alive. As you say, you don't have to look real far for number one. It's cost him 15 yards and uh, more than that, closer to 25 yards. In field position, I think the ball is behind you. Yeah, look, hey, guys, back here, back here, guys, back here, guys. Wow. The ball was originally spotted at the Florida A&M 43. It's now marked back at the Bethune 31. That's 25 yards, a quarter of this field. And Alvin Wyatt is 10 yards onto the field. He could get a 15-yard bench infraction the referee is over to talk about the I guess with the chain gang to talk about the spot of the ball the basic spot on the hold is where it occurred where the hold occurred and then you mark it off from there and so basically the hold is in the backfield the quarterback hold to his right had a deep roll had a deep roll, and so what, what you're seeing is basically marking it off from the spot file, unlike what you see in the pro game where they mark it off 15 yards from the line of scrimmage. With 328 remaining, Alvin Wyatt, uh, he, is, he is so close to a MEAC championship and the NCAA berth that a company said he can taste it, the ball in Florida and in territory, and in two plays, He's back at his own 30. Oh, just I mean, this is a this is a this is a backbreaker situation. Referee John Boger is explaining to Alvin and the stress and the strain on Bethune's head coach and uh, the explanation to the other side of the field now. You had the sack of Patrell Troutman. Then the holding call in successive plays. And you see the head coach coming down on the sideline wanting to get an explanation. Big Daddy's coming down. Watch out. Well, it's, it's up to his defense now. Yes. Right? No question about it. 
And uh, Clifton Moore, his defensive coordinator, can take it from here. The explanation. The penalty should have been taken from the line of scrimmage. Instead, it was taken from the spot of the foul. We will reset the chain to the previous line of scrimmage, penalize 10 yards, and replay second down. They're going to replay the down? No, they're going to replay. They're going to basically take the ball back from the line of scrimmage. What they're saying is they're going back to the line of scrimmage and marking it off 10 yards as opposed to marking off the spot foul, which is interesting because I thought that if the ball, if there was a foul behind the line of scrimmage, well, they've got the, the line of scrimmage now incorrect. They've got it incorrect because the line of scrimmage was closer to midfield. In fact, the down and distance marker is still there. Mark second down right on the midfield stripe. And Alvin Wyatt is standing out there. Alvin Wyatt is right standing here. right you up there. Right, right up there said, hey, guys, it's up here. We will go to that spot and enforce a 10-yard penalty and replay second down. But holding is from the spot of the infraction, I thought. And that had occurred back Somewhere, closer to yeah, absolutely. Back here in the backfield, that's where the play, that's where the holding occurred. And so you would think that they would mark it because it was in the backfield. It's the greater of the two, I believe. Well, whatever Alvin Wyatt has done, he needs to be working for one of the presidential parties <laughs> up and appealing to the Florida Supreme Court because he's been very persuasive here. Absolutely. He's just bought himself 10 yards of real estate. No question about it. And again, because this offense is not really adept at being able to get massive chunks of yardage, it's a big play. All right. Second down. With so much at stake, and now another flag. Thrown again. Along the line of scrimmage. And it appears that it will be against Bethune. So quite clearly, Bethune, when it matters most, has struggled here. And the thing is, is that really the guy who's creating all the havoc is number one, Jerron Daly. What he's doing, he's got the tackle shaking in their boots because I believe he has five or six sacks on the day. And because of that great speed, he's been able to really get tackles shaken up. We're back to the 35. Uh, six sacks. Your math is correct. He's been busy. So has uh, Yanni Mintz, our statistician. Coffin. Guns down the middle of the field, but behind his open target in Eric Lash. Lash, between defenders, a 42-yard line was open. And now it's third down. And again, you're going to see right here again, that's one of those plays where the receiver's got to make the play. Trotman gets the ball in the area, and he gets his hands on the ball. Yes, it's behind him, but again, catching the ball with his body. Because he tried to catch the ball with his body, that's the reason he's down on the ground. Great throw. This young man has put up a fine effort. Again, shaky early on in the game. Nerves, obviously, a concern. Obviously, his job is a concern because you're talking about Super, a guy who's come in and has played well in the last couple of games. So this is a big third down. And really, the facts are, this is a big third down because they're going to have to go for it in two places. Get half the yards. If you can get 15 yards, then the next time you're going to have to go for it fourth and every. On third down. Four-man run. Troutman steps up, uses the umpire to float it upfield, and it's incomplete. Trey Ryan Porter could not hold on. Javon Henry, the fullback, was there as well. And now fourth down and 31 yards to go with 243. You know what I might do? Oh, you only have one timeout remaining. Do you punt it away? I mean, the odds of making it on fourth and 31 are minuscule. He's going to kick it out of there. Yeah, and that's the tough thing about it. You're absolutely right. Looking at that again now, not having the timeouts available to make, you know, make the defense make some plays, very difficult. He's going to punt. Missed his last seven passing attempts to Charles Trotman. 2.43 to go. And that's not really all his fault because you remember there were a couple of drops on that series as well. Adrian kicks, tumbles it. And uh, Isaac Brown allows uh, Bethune to down that at the 30-yard line. That's about the point they needed to reach to get the first anyway. They hardly punted that far. <laughs> Two and a half minutes remaining to decide who will win. The MEAC at the Millennium. No question about it. This is what the Florida Classic is all about. As they say, we have a bun bun.
Uh, history tonight, a part of Florida A&M. This is the first game in the history of 1AA in which two players have reached 1,000 yards in the same game. Earlier we told you Jaquay Nunnally receiving. And the running back, O.J. Marchbanks, has gone over 1,000 yards rushing the football tonight. So another footnote to a legacy that has left us on this evening here in Orlando. And again, you remember, again, I think when they recount that, that's 100, that will be a 108-yard return at the end of the day. Now you see the offense still at the line running there, no huddle, but you see Gray just standing there, the mighty Quinn, again, at, as the general, just waiting till that clock ticks down. Excellent management of the clock. Late clock, game clock, second down. Meeting two, straight ahead, March back. Where's the spot? Third down. And this defense has to be exhausted. I mean, when you consider the fact that on the field pretty much the entire game, when you look at it, this defense has given their heart and soul. And Mathis, number 16, has been the leader and driving force. And again, he's tried to will his team to be able to make things happen. It is third down now. Third and a yard. 145 remaining. Bethune digs in. On third down, Marchbanks has the first down. And uh, Bethune, with the timeout remaining, may go on ahead and use it here. FAMU has run 97 offensive plays. Those young men have been on the field defensively for Bethune-Cookman for 97 plays. Uh, what a game tonight. Truly a classic. In Orlando, beneath the lights, a pause late in the action. Home to the Orlando Magic. Sunshine Network. Have a shaken uh, Bethune Cookman Wildcat being attended to now with a minute and 38 seconds remaining in this game. Not to, not to speculate, but it appears to be. Tor L. Robinson played so well, and as you can see, he's being considerable pain. What a game this has been. This 21st Florida Classic presented by Walt Disney World Resorts and by Amtrak. What a difference the train makes. It appears that the Florida A&M is on the fast train. Toward postseason. Now, last year they did so well. Won two games in the postseason and only a Hail Mary pass in the final minute by Youngstown State denied them a chance to play for the championship. And, I, and you gotta hope that the selection committee takes an opportunity and actually looks at this game. I mean, when you look at teams, I've covered I've covered Georgia Southern and they definitely definitely deserve to be in. I've covered Furman this year. I've done games all across Division II. And the thing, the fact that that this team right now deserves to be in the playoffs. Bethune Cookman has put it up, put up an astounding show when you consider the fact that again, defensively they have been out on the field 97 plays. 543 yards given up. On the other side of that, you've got the defense of FAMU that's only been on the field 62 plays. An extreme advantage. I mean, when you think about, again, how much guys really want this game, these young men have given their all. That would include Toro Robinson, the freshman from Delray Beach, Florida. Being attended to there. Uh, for the... Let's give him a hand as he comes up. The Rattlers of A&M, one victory away from their ninth of the year, and a MEAC championship. This would be their 40th conference win in the last six seasons of play. First down now. Quinn Gray. Try and milk the final 90 seconds off that clock. And preserve as well a conference crowd. And the Bethune just trying to get back and get to that football any way they can. They stack up here, They're running back in March Banks. And now they'll use that last timeout with 1.14 to go. Isaiah Smith on this stop in the middle. The last time that they can stop it here with 1.14 remaining. 
What a valiant effort this was tonight for Bethune, which uh, they were humiliated last year, embarrassed. 62-14. Yeah. What did Alvin Wyatt say? They would not score 63 points on us this year. <laughs> and he's absolutely right. You're talking about a guy, again, a leader, a builder of men. And you, you talk about the great things that they both these coaches have done, Coach Joe and Coach Wyatt, in working with their men. And he has built this program to a perennial winner. And you'll see right there all those young men on the sidelines there, defensive coordinator, a guy that we really got to give a lot of credit to. And I haven't mentioned him at all today, but he's been responsible as well. Clifton Moore has done a tremendous Tremendous job of working with this team. Offensively on the other side, you got Jimmy Joe, the younger brother, who did a great job with the offense and the development. When you talk about Coach Gray, uh, excuse me, Coach Gray, the mighty Quinn, you, when you talk about that kind of development, it takes a great coach to build a young man like that. Alvin Wyatt. It's just living out there. He will take consolation in the fact these nine wins this year, and Bethune will settle uh, for a nine and two slate, are the most at Bethune since 1976, since uh, every football player in uniform was born. <laughs> they won 10 games to the university back in uh, 1976. Truly a leader, truly a leader, truly a guy who, as you saw yesterday in the banquet yesterday, a man who has his troops rallied. As Mark Gray alluded to in the introduction, when you slap these guys in the mouth, they buck up on it. And that's exactly what happens. You see right there the calm, cool, collected Coach Joe, knowing that his dear friend put up a valiant fight. Mint the rings for Billy Joe and the Rattlers as the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference champions. They have but to hang on for a uh, final minute and change. Two rivals. This will be the fifth win for Billy Joe and his many tries against Alvin Wyatt. And you see the clock down here. He, you talked about a guy convincing the coach. Alvin Wyatt has done it again, convincing to give him ten more minutes so he can finish playing the game. It's been a, a challenging night, to say the least, for Jerome Bulger, our uh, referee. I believe that there is... A minute 30 seconds, or a minute 14 seconds, rather, remaining in this game. Every second priceless for the third Cookman. But they uh, fought Florida A&M for everything that they were worth. A solid effort on the part of uh, both clubs here tonight. And again, I want to tip my hat to Commissioner Harris, who put on a fine, fine festival, and the city of Orlando, who welcomed it and, and threw this, this event here. Timeout. Stop the clock. We're gonna, uh, another injured uh, Bethune Kirkman Wildcat. All right, a pause in the action. Back to wrap it up in a moment. Place to start when you need parts. Final moments of what has been a classic this evening on Sunshine Network, the Florida Classic. 21, presented by Walt Disney World Resort and Amtrak for our entire Sunshine Network team. We certainly wish you and yours the most happiest of uh, Thanksgiving seasons. <laughs> Carve up the turkey and stuff it. Giblets, gravy, and I think if I uh, will remind you that you'll be able to order a video of this weekend's festivities. Recount and see how long was that return by Rasheen Mathis. No question about it. I know it was close to 107, somewhere 108. About the third row of the checkerboard end zone. Absolutely. Huh? Absolutely. A play that will go down in the end. Linebacker Anthony Hubbard being uh, helped to the sideline. You know, some fans will say that it's a fan of effort. Here is that 100 and, well, let me see. You're right. That is closer to 108 yards. No question about it. Again, this play will go down. You'll see right there a young man who's going off the field, Hubbard, right there. Again, he's a guy that's definitely due for an academy. And it winds down. Jamie, this has just been a, a load of laughs, a lot of fun, this battle between these two teams. Had again, just the fans got their money's worth. Great bands, great football being played. 
and a last carry. And uh, that should do it. From the band, from two head coaches, and from two teams who may very well be among the NCAA's elite and play on in the postseason. For Alvin Wyatt and for Billy Joel, this classic is over, and it belongs to the Rattlers. No question about it. And again, this game is what it's all about. It's the love of the game. And you'll see Coach Joe right there trying to get the players out the field. A well-deserved victory for the Florida a and Rebels. They cut it down, and Florida A&M has won once again their sixth consecutive triumph over the Wildcats of Bethune College. Champions of the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference once again, your final in the Florida Citrus Bowl here in Orlando. It is Florida A&M over Bethune, 31 to 28. For Jamie Dukes and Mark Gray, Ken Cavanaugh, Jimmy Lee Sterling, our director, I'm Paul Kennedy. Happy Thanksgiving to you and yours as the Rattlers win the MEAC crown. Got the urge. Hey, Florida Classic fans, this was a classic. The 21st edition of Florida A&M at Bethune-Cookman College. It was our pleasure on Sunshine Network to bring it to you and here to offer you a video edition. Here's the key, available on the World Wide Web or by calling 1-800-776-7808. Available videos include the Friday Night Step Show, the big game between the Rattlers and the Wildcats, and the Halftime Show. All brought to you by Amtrak. What a difference a train makes. To get your laugh on as Black Voices goes backstage with comedian Ricky Smiley. Plus, the latest in news you can use. And a talk with the NFL great and Grambling head coach Doug Williams. Then, the Code Lifestyle features jazz, punk man extraordinaire Cal Bennett. Plus, get ready for Black Color Football at its very best. DVQ travels to the Turkey Day Classic in Montgomery, Alabama, and to New Orleans for the Bayou Classic. And this week's entertainment spotlight is the gospel singer, Demita. You're inside where African Americans live online. This is Black Voices. From the Tribune Tower in Chicago, 